Good evening, everyone. It is um, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, November 2nd. It is, uh, I call the meeting of the Select Board to order at 624. Please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you everybody. A um, few meetings to uh, get us started. Uh, today's meeting is being recorded for the uh, home audience. Um, reminder, winter parking ban is in effect from November 15th through April 1st, so that's coming up very soon. There shall be no parking on any streets between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Vehicles in violation will be ticketed and towed at the owner's expense. Also, snow and ice removal from driveway, sidewalks, or private property shall not be plowed, shoveled, blown, or otherwise deposited across any public way, street, or roadway. In other words, don't pile it on the streets, please. Thank you. Um, Brad, can we read the warrants? Yes, warrants FY24-9, accounts payable $368,825.32. FY24-9, payroll $189,105.81. FY24-9 withholding $29,236.62. All right, thank you. Um, it is, uh, my watch says it is 625 and the, the tax classification hearing is scheduled for 630. Should we try and find something to do until our official start time? You could discuss the correspondence. That might take five minutes. Yes, that's, can I do that out of order since it's not yeah. an agenda item? Since it's not a numbered item? Sure. Oh, good. And there we go. So I wanted to, uh, I, I was going to save this to, as a good news at the end, but I will. You read the part about summarizing, right? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be disclosing anyone's name or address, but I wanted to uh, share a letter that the uh, town received from a resident who uh, uh, in, uh, had a medical emergency and they wanted to thank the town and the response specifically of the police department and the emergency squad for the service that they provided to this person. Uh, they spent uh, several days in the hospital, but they seemed to be on the mend, but they were very happy with the uh, performance of the uh, police officer from Chief Blanche's department and the uh, paramedics and emergency technicians from um, Chief Lafleur's emergency services department. It didn't take five minutes. But All right, can no, I make it, a motion to take number nine out of order um, as well as number six? So. Uh, uh, you made the motion? Made the Second. Motion. All right. All in favor of taking nine and six out of order, please say aye. 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 All right. So nine first of approving the select board minutes. Sir, I make a motion that we approve the select board minutes for 10, 9, 18, 10, 5, 23, 10, 12, 23, um, as well, and uh, 10, 19, 23. Is that executive minutes on the 10, 19? No. No, mm -hmm. because it was opted not to be held in executive session. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, regular yep. session. All of those is regular session. <laughs> Second. All right. Uh, any discussion on the contents of the uh, minutes that were sent to us for review? No. All right. Seeing as there's none, uh, all in favor of approving the uh, the minutes for the dates mentioned, uh, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And uh, number six, the Bay Path liquor license. As I understand, uh, due to a uh, transfer of ownership, the uh, they are. License, this is a license for the, I believe, the balance of 2023, and they're in the process of uh, doing their licensing for 2024. So it's a routine matter just as a result of the transfer of ownership of that place. Um, we've already approved their, we, I know we voted on them once. Did, they've gone yeah. up to the ABCC, they've been approved, and now it's just coming down to us to acknowledge, acknowledge and formally the grant. The so it's just a sign. It's just a sign license. license. Everything already, it's got the stamp of approval, which I gave you all copies of. Mm -hmm. I think it's like we had to approve something, then the ABCC does their thing, and yeah. then it comes down to us for yeah, final acknowledgement, yeah, 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 or, or final granting. Right. right, yeah, so I, I think everything's fall, flowing according to proper procedure. Yeah. All right, so I'll take a motion to sign this. Motion to sign. Second. All right, all in favor of me, uh, let's see. And uh, all in favor of the select board signing this, because I see three signatures. I think we all sign it. Mm -hmm. All right. All in favor of the board signing this document, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. 
sign it, and then pass it down to Karen so that she can take care of that. Within a minute, I can start now, right? No. Or do I? Yeah. I have to wait. <laughs> What's that? We got stuff at the top. We didn't do announcements for approving the warrants. No, I did, no, we did, I did announcements and warrants. Yeah. yeah. Right. So then I, I was going to say. I make a motion that we take uh, number eight out of order. Well, that's going to take a while. How yep. about this we have we have a minute. The the hearing is in one hour. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't see anything on the agenda that will squeeze into our remaining thirty seconds. <laughs> Yeah. Brad, can you sing us a number? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, come on. Tom? All right. Um, uh, yes, Marty. Uh, just a question. Is, are you working on a different agenda than the one that's handed out here? Because the uh, select board minutes were item 8. Agenda, not, not oh, I... Jack moved to take those out of order. Yeah, but... No, 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 no. Point. His... No, no. Yes, there's. So hold on, hold on. Um, Marty, uh, good point, Marty. Let me look here and. Um, that's because an item that's on our agenda was actually removed because we prior to the that was printed. I think. No, um, no. The the difference is on the agenda made to the public. Items eight and nine are reversed versus what I have in front of me. Ew. Okay. So, so on there, they're just out of order. So yes. So um, so for the record, the agenda that I'm working off of has. Um, ARPA fund, the discussion of ARPA funds as agenda item number eight and the select board minutes was agenda number nine. Otherwise, um, one through seven on my list are one through seven on the list that was distributed to the public. So I apologize for the, uh, for the error. But So Marty, that explains why. Yep, thank you. No worries. And it's now 6.30. So I open the tax classification hearing at 6.31. Hey Al, how you doing? Long time no see. Hey, nice chance. Can we call you Al? <laughs> I don't know. Can, can he call you Benny? <laughs> okay, sure. so uh, welcome to the tax classification hearing. Mm -hmm. The primary focus is to decide on a tax rate, um, whether it's going to be a split rate or it's going to be a straight across the board. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also prepared just to kind of give a a state of the union as far as uh, taxes in general go um, and what to look forward so I'm going to kind of go at a higher level if you want me to drill down I can mm -hmm. um, I do have some attachments if we want to get into them but we don't have to it's whatever you guys you know want to talk about um, so the first thing I would say is um, everything is going to be tax rate related um, not the taxes that were voted on at the annual town meeting. Those are already set. This is how we pay for those. Uh, recent tax history, um, 2017, uh, when we started, Patty and I, Patty started shortly after, tax rate was 1962. Um, last year was 1598, estimating around 1520 this year, which is about a 29% decrease over the last uh, seven or eight years. Now, can you say that one more time? What was it? 1962, what? Two years what ago? The tax rates. What was it? Uh, it was 1962 yeah. and 17, and it's estimating 1520 this year, 1598 last year. So it'll be about 30, 29%, 30% discount decrease. Um, and when you look at when you look at that, it, it should go down in a good economy. Um, so it's really not a great tool to use to say how your taxes are doing. Um, however, so I'm just going to, I guess I'll give you guys each one. Is that, is that how we do this, if I have attachments? If, you, if you've got three, that'd be great. Yep. Yes. Karen, do you need one? She does, but only at the end. Okay. If you have one, we can pass one down to her. Sure. So what I did was took like uh, 10, 12 towns from the area, compared their tax rates over the last same period. And so we came up, this was through 2023 because not everybody has 2024 values. Um, so in the, in the period of time on, on this, uh, this is attachment A at the top, um, we've gone down about 23%. 
Um, most of the towns were less than that, a couple were more. Um, some towns, like when we've gone down, let's say 23%, Sturbridge has only gone down 7%, Wales 2%. So they're, because their values are still going up, uh, they're in a much different tax situation, I would say, than we are. Um, the next, uh, there's a column there that has a number of uh, single family homes in town, and uh, we are like 400 less than Brimfield, which surprised me. Um, the average value of a single family home last year in this town was uh, 301,863. Um, as of this year, it'll pro across the board about a 12% raise in values, so we'll be in the 330, which will bring us in line with where Brimfield and some of these other towns were last year. However, I think it's prudent to stay on the low side rather than try to get the values up as high as you can, anticipating at some point it's going to go down and we don't want to have a massive crash that kills everybody. So I'm more in favor of staying on the 95% side instead of some towns that might want to go to 102, 104 and make things look better maybe than they are tax rate wise. Um, so the average tax bill in this town last year, 48 for a single family, 4,800. This year I anticipate it'd be a little over 5,000. And I have all the other towns here. Um, they range from a high of uh, 6,800 in Sturbridge to uh, the low 4,000s. Um, so then the, the last section here is uh, tax, the tax bill affordability. Um, the lower the number, the more affordable. So, uh, so they listed from one to 351. So number one, so the first three on it would be like uh, Weston, Brookline, Lincoln, Wellesley. Those are the least affordable. So they, they get a high number. Most affordable, in case anybody's looking to move, uh, Hancock, Rowe, Florida, Monroe, and Irving. Uh, all of them out, I believe, all, they're all hill towns, I believe, they are right? All mm -hmm. towns. Those are considered the most affordable in the town of Massachusetts. So, now, by affordability, that's the, that's the affordability of the average tax bill? Yep. It's a ranking. So, okay. what they do is they take the average income mm -hmm. and they, I mean, there's a whole algorithm that goes with it. I just took this off the DLS website mm -hmm. um, and they say, okay, this is what the average homeowner is making earning per year or taking in per year. This is what the average tax bill is. Here's the affordability. Okay. And the interesting one on this is, we've gone from the 228th least affordable to the 253rd least affordable, which is almost a 10% decline. Nobody else is near that on the list, with some going the other way. Sturbridge is 9.5% less affordable now than it was um, seven years ago. So there's a lot on that, but I mm -hmm. just tried to give you guys an idea. So when people talk about the tax rate going down and everything's going to be rosy, it's not necessarily the case. You do want to see it go down, but there's other things that need to happen, like business and stuff that needs to come into town to help. And that, that'll lead us into our next section, unless you mm -hmm. guys have copy, uh, questions on this. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm good. Okay, so um, the next thing, uh, da -da -da -da, I'm over um, the town spent seven and three quarters more this year. Does that sound right, Kelly? Tell me for what, and I'll tell you what For the uh, town meeting? I mean, I had it, but they went from 10, 10 million, 300 thousand to about 11 million 100 thousand mm -hmm. yeah, the levy it's 1168 but yeah okay 11, 1, that's close yeah i just run so um so i had that as like a um 7.73 percent increase um then after all the free cash cherry sheet everything else that goes into it the amount left to be uh, uh to be raised and appropriated through the taxes Six million five six million five hundred thousand approximate, whereas a year ago it was six million seventy seven thousand. So that was up like seven point three percent. And I'm guesstimating that the tax bills are gonna go up about six point six percent. 
So it's good that our tax bills are going up less than the than the um, than the total amount spent. Um, when you compare anything with Brookfield with any of the other towns, um, keep in mind that about half of this town is untaxable between lakes, rivers, wetlands, Chapter 61, Audubon, um, schools, this building, etc. So we have uh, a, a big disadvantage against most of the local towns uh, and being a farming community that Chapter 61 plays in. So when you look at when you try to compare town versus town, really difficult to do because every town has its own um, its own little uh, mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, is a good way to put it. So the next the next thing I would I've never really gone into um, a split tax rate, but I've been asked about it a boatload of times uh, in the last two three weeks. It's I, I can go into it and show you what the damage would be. Um, if you're interested, but if you have a full agenda, we don't have to go into it. Just summarize it, please, for the uh, for the whole audience. Okay, if you look at your second attachment, mm -hmm. I listed the like probably 12, 14 closest towns physically to us that have a split tax rate. Mm -hmm. Worcester being the closest, Auburn, um, and if you look down the list, Agawam, Auburn, Berlin. They all have large something. Agawam has a Six Flags, plus a lot of stuff on Route 5. Auburn has malls, um, distribution, Berlin, malls, Chicopee, manufacturing. So they all have a big thing to, for you, for if you want to shift away from the, from the residential and shift over and have more of a tax uh, burden on the commercial. Mm -hmm. So. We're looking at numbers like 23, 24, 29 percent commercial in a lot of these towns. We're seven. Mm -hmm. Of that seven, about half of that is uh, gas company, cable, electric. So any shifting we do will, if you double the, if you if you if you start taxing the cable more, what are they going to do? They're going to turn around and raise the rates. So. In these, in the bigger towns, it's not as it's not as um, it's a smaller percentage because there's 25% mm -hmm. instead of 7%. <coughs> um, there's some towns that can shift up to 50. We're one of them. Some have up to 75% they can do. I don't know if that's a city versus town thing. Do you have any idea on that, Kelly? No. I, don't. I know they're different. Mm -hmm. And the idea, the idea here, just to make sure everyone understands, is that the idea of splitting the tax rate is by increasing the tax rate on businesses to allow for a reduction of the tax rate on the residential side. Correct. And so the, in, in, these, in towns like Pittsfield, where they have GE, um, you, can, you, you can use your, anything, any town that has a huge um, commercial tax base, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the commercial taxpayers are more than happy to pay a premium because they want to be there. Uh, they want to be in that community. They, they want to deliver out of Worcester. They don't want to deliver out of West Brookfield or Brookfield. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is just for your FYI. I, this is every town in the state and their, and their split tax rate. Uh, that's just to look at. I, I had pulled out the ones that are in bold are the ones that were on your previous sheet. Okay, thank you. The very last one is the most important one. And what this would say is if we, if we put as much burden on our small commercial, industrial, personal property tax base as we could, um, it would drop the residential rate about 4%. Mm -hmm. And it would drive the commercial side up about 49%. Mm -hmm. um, so using the, uh, an average single family home value of 338, 411, uh, the average residents would see a $209, $210 decrease per year in tax, whereas the average commercial would see about a $2,500 increase, mm -hmm. um, which is why small towns like ours just can't do it. I mean, if yeah. you did it once, cable company, all those people are going to come back and slap everybody with more, more fees, mm -hmm. and the small businesses are going to yeah. say, those, those we'll who can next door. will leave, yeah. yeah. Um, fundamentally, it's like the, with that shift in tax rate, I think you said that about half of our commercial industrial property uh, tax base 
is in the utilities. Correct. So you would expect that they would recover that increased cost through the town's folks paying their rates. So effectively, half of the savings that would be on the residential tax bill would then go to the utility companies to that pay That would be it my theory. Way. I is, can't is the, prove is, that, yeah, but no, that's, that's my theory. It's the expectation. And, that, and the remaining would be paid by the businesses, but it would be a... Um, a disincentive for new businesses to come to town. Absolutely. With, like that. And so, also, I mean, I think when it's all said and done, whatever the new fees would be, would be in excess of $210, which is what the average resident saved. Mm -hmm. uh, one other thing I skipped over quick is the average uh, sale price for mobile homes in town in the, in the parks is up to 150000 which is pretty high compared to what it was a few years ago. Mm-hmm. But it's People in line with everything somewhere. else. Yeah, everything's going up. So I know I hit a lot of things. I hit them really fast. Mm -hmm. I'm more than happy to go into any of that if you want. Um, in my um, my expertise would say, please don't vote for a split tax no. rate. <laughs> um, it would not be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Do they also need to vote not to do a residential exemption? And no, that's by that's by vote to have those. If you're just doing so, a strap, we've no, never done that in the past. It. They don't have to have an affirmative vote not to do a residential. No, because okay. the default is none okay. on the um, on gateway. Sure didn't miss that that Good question. Good. Yep. And every one of you has been through this before. Beth, you've been through this like 40 times. So mm -hmm. um, you're amazingly consistent in your explanation. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. Well, I just write it down. And I read the same thing next year. <laughs> <laughs> just new numbers. New numbers. Mm -hmm. right. so yeah. I'm gonna get a motion to go with a single tax rate. Second. Um, yeah. Yeah. Second. Wait, wait. You're asking for motions? Yeah, you asked. Excuse me. No, but you I think said, that's. I'm, I, I oh. Said, I said. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought I thought I heard you ask for a motion. That's what yeah. I thought. She said. Yeah. I said I make a motion. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm trying no. to. Second. Thank you. No, I'm just giving, just being funny. All right. Uh, let's see. Any discussion on the single tax rate? No. All right. All in favor of a single tax rate for the uh, for the for the current fiscal year, please say aye. 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 All right. Al, do you need anything else from us? Not at all. All right. No, nope, your blessing that I can leave. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, seeing as we uh, seeing as there's nothing, is there? Does anyone feel there's anything else to discuss in this hearing? Therefore, I will uh, close this hearing at six forty-six. Thank you, sir. No you problem. are free to go. Anybody that has wants to follow up next week or a month from now, more than happy to go over the stuff if you have specific questions. All right. Next up, on the next up on the agenda is a James Cook Passenger Rail Station discussion. Go on up, Mr. Cook. Uh, well, good evening, all. Um, Hopefully you got what I asked to put in your packet. But what I'm here to discuss is having you folks put on the next town meeting a proposal to have Brookfield raise its hand and request the state put in a passenger rail station. I'm going to go into, because I got some points, the background, in case you don't understand why, why it makes sense from a railroad's perspective, what the benefit is to the town, a need for vision here, and finally, the actual wording of the motion I'm proposing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know how many of you saw about last, well, about a month and a half ago, Congressman Neal announced that, that they had secured $108 million in federal funding to increase passenger rail service and expand it between Worcester and Springfield. Okay? And that set in motion this idea that we should raise our hand and request a passenger rail station. Mm -hmm. And the reason, if you're going to put in a passenger rail station, why it would make sense in Brookfield is the most important thing you need is to have parking spaces, because otherwise you can't get people to use the railroad, right? Mm -hmm. If you look along Mill Street, okay, where it, that would make an ideal spot if you think about it. If you look back in the past, 100 years ago, that location was a freight station, okay? But you, the, rail, the passenger stations were in East Brookfield and West Brookfield. If you know where the passenger station was in East Brookfield now, it's where the post office is. There's not real space for parking over there. If you look at West Brookfield, 
that old passenger station is now the senior center or something else, and it's in an industrial area. So you probably wouldn't want to put a passenger station there. If you look at where we have, where the old freight station used to be along Mill Street, because of the fact that there isn't a lot of building around there, it gives us ample space to do parking. We also have the Mill Street site, which could be used as an actual station or a shelter, depending what the state would do with it. In addition to which, if you're going to put in a passenger station, you want to be near a rail switching yard because you want to be able to divert trains. There's a rail switching yard in East Brookfield that CSX operates. So from the point of view of putting a passenger from a rail point, in addition to which, you also want access to the roads. Mill Street is right off 148 and near Route 9. So it's a good location if you're going to put a passenger station between Worcester and Palmer, where they're proposing to have another one. Mm -hmm. It'd be the ideal location to put it. Now, why should Brookfield raise its hand? Well, simple answer is we need to revitalize the, the economy of this town. If you look back 100 years ago, when the freight station was active, there's more business there was in this town than there is today. In addition to which, there's an opportunity for the town to make some revenue. If you put in a passenger station on Mill Street, widen the road, put in parking meters, that's passive revenue for the town. The town probably has land, I would hope, to put in a parking lot Again, more pass passive revenue for the town. More importantly, the benefit to the town is that once you have a passenger stop, because in the, re in the retail business, location is everything, you get foot traffic, it provides an economic incentive for small businesses to spring up around that passenger rail station. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is what we really need, is some economic revitalization in this town. If you look at the disadvantages we have, we're off the beaten path in terms of the road network. Right? And you look what happened historically to this town. When Tantasca was formed in the 50s, we were the big kahuna. But back then, we had mills in town and we had an active freight railway system that was supplanted by the interstate highway system. Right? So Brookfield has shrunk while Sturbridge has grown in large part due to the interstate highway system. So I think it would be in our advantage to raise our hand and request a passenger rail station. I mean, one of the things that I've lived in town for 35 years, and I think we've had a lack of vision here. And I think if you want to revitalize this town and revitalize the economy, if you could get the state to put in a passenger rail station, that's the only thing I think we can feasibly do to really provide a catalyst for business in this town. Mm -hmm. So having said that, I have, I'm, asking you because to use a bad metaphor i think if you look at where the 108 million it's, it's to my knowledge it's already been pledged right so use a bad metaphor the, the train is already leaving the station but that doesn't mean we can't raise our hand and say we want a passenger stop here so that's why i'm asking you folks to put on the next special town meeting because i think time is of the essence here this particular article which i'll read to see if the town will request or take any action relative to, to having State Representative Donald Berthium Jr. file special legislation in the Massachusetts General Court to have the Commonwealth establish and fund a passenger rail station in Brookfield as part of the state's expansion of commuter rail service between Worcester and Springfield. A couple points. I don't care if you tweak this, but there are two key points in this. <clears throat> One, have the Commonwealth establish and fund. If you're going to put in a passenger stop, you're either going to have to put in shelters or you're going to have to put in, ideally, to me, a building because of the inclement weather. You want to make sure the state pays for that, right? The other thing is having Representative Berthium actually file a piece of legislation. There's an arcane state law which basically says the town meeting can have its state rep file legislation on the town's behalf. If you do that, that puts a marker in. If you really want to see this happen, you're going to have to campaign and lobby at the state house to make this a reality. But to me, the first step is to determine whether there's any support for this either in the town of Brookfield. Because if there's no support for this, there's no point wasting any of our time in this room trying to make it a reality, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking. See if there's any support in the town for this idea. And if there is, then we can have a follow-up discussion as to what we should or can do. Mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> and I'll take questions. <laughs> Does this have to also go into, if, it's, if you're asking for a special legislation, the first step is town meeting, does it also have to be a ballot question? 
I don't know. You, maybe you can research it. To my knowledge, it has to just be a town meeting vote. But I could be, again, I'm not. But there is a state law which says that. I know that we can petition to have a special legislation done. But I'm not sure if this is just the first step. But I can, I can look into that if you, yeah. if you want to. Yeah. Well, any comments? Do you folks think this is a good idea or a bad idea? Let me start with the selectman. I spoke to him yesterday in depth, and I'm for it. <laughs> I mean, it's the the way it's presented. It's like, who wouldn't want something for free? And so, and and so, just my and it it's it's like, I'm not opposed to this. It's just I'm trying to understand what would be what would be asked of us. In the in the end, I mean, in order to make this happen, because okay, and, and, and I mean, it's like we can focus on the goodies all we want, but what's it going to take for us to do it? Both in, I mean, both financial and who's going to have to raise their hand and say, "I will help lead that charge. I will help. I will take turns calling Rep. Bertiom and whoever our new senator is." I've when, already done that. <laughs> it's like, and in order to let them know that there is significant support for this. Because it's when the phone, when the the more the phone rings, the more it goes up to priority list in general. Okay, let me let me give you my thoughts. So w the one advantage we have is we have Mill Street Park, and that would be the site we would probably the town would probably have to donate or give that land over to the state of Massachusetts for where they would either put shelters, mm -hmm. which is what they've done if you look at some of the MTA rail stations. Ideally, I think they should put in a small building. Mm -hmm. Myself, okay, I don't know all the lay all the land we own on Mill Street, but we should ideally make some arrangements to put in a parking lot. In addition to which, if you're gonna start putting a passenger station around that, whether you're gonna to have to do it, you're probably gonna to have to widen Mill Street, right? You're probably gonna to have to put in lights at Mill Street and 148. You're probably gonna to have to do some road work around that, right? Mm -hmm. Again, you would lobby the state to have the state pay a portion of that using chapter 90, if I got the correct number on highway funds, right, to mm -hmm. do that. But to me, before we get into the discussion of that, you got to see to me whether there's support in the townspeople for this idea. Yeah, cause that, and, and that's a good point from a standpoint of, and I don't know that we would have to take it to town meeting, but it's a means that's a unequivocal. It's unequivocal what the what the voice of the people is, at least the folks that attend that mm -hmm. particular town meeting. So there's really there's really three ways that we can get clear input from the community. The least, I want to call it valuable, from a standpoint of it's sometimes hard to get support for them is just a, a public hearing regarding, you know, hey, we need a selectman. Because frankly, we could start calling, you know, our, you know, Donald Berkey. I already could, called him, Neil, right. and I got a call in with Mass DOT. Right. So, you know, any one of us as either a citizen or as a board could start to pursue this. Mm -hmm. You know, what the town meeting does for us is gives the opportunity for it to be a functionally a binding vote. And to Mr. Cook's standpoint, whether Donnie wanted to support it or not, it, our town meeting could obligate him to file that legislation. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Um, or you can do, you know, a non-binding vote on the next ballot that actually gets drawn up, which I think we, you know, we missed this fall one, so we could put it on like the the spring town election even prior to the annual town meeting, and also mm -hmm. get what might be a somewhat broader, um, uh, you know, population of people that would yeah. be answering affirmatively or negatively towards having this. Yeah, we'd get more people responding than if we just had people stand up at town meeting because yeah. not as many people show up there. Yeah, I mean, and, and just local elections are usually, you know, pretty small, but mm -hmm. it's still typically bigger than what you get at town meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in terms of trying to get Donnie to file the legislation, I'd say that the town meeting is your sure bet. And I don't know how responsive was, was he? They were open to it. They were all open to mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. okay. They thought it was a good location between Palmer and Worcester. I mean, it is. I mean, for all the reasons stated previously. So, mm -hmm. and, and honestly, even though the property next to Mill Street Park is privately owned, I, I, I don't know that that individual wouldn't be happy to unload that property to the, to the state of the town for a, a fair rate as well. Mm -hmm. So, 
there's a lot of opportunity with the properties that are there. Yeah, I, I, I personally have some concerns about the logistics of how it would fit, but that's not my area of expertise. And it's like, I would say, let's, let's see if we can make this happen and we can and see, and see how far it goes. Like now, it the, now, the, now the downside is the potential. We're already a bedroom community. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would potentially, you know, some people would call it revitalized Brookfield, but there are others that may mm -hmm. like it as a sleepy, quiet, mostly residential community who would be relatively hostile to the increased traffic, increased commercial, increased everything. So yeah, I, I think it is good to have a, a full town dialogue on it. Yeah, I, and I agree. I think that's putting it on the town meeting putting it on the either the uh, the election ballot or on town meeting would be the uh, would be the way for um the the, the residents to um make their opinions known now, now the one thing area. i will say is if we're if we've already had any communications with donnie about this and we're you know did you do it as a private citizen or was yeah it, yeah yeah okay so well i have other things going on with them currently yeah. so I, just brought it up in conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. So I and I don't know. It it may be value added to you if we have the room on an agenda between now and whenever it goes up for town meeting. It may be worth starting that dialogue with the community and holding a public hearing as part of one of our regular meetings. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because I think I, there's always a chance that there's no guarantee we're going to have a special town meeting. Because I think that's mainly being yeah, driven gonna, by, by that's mainly that. being driven by the union contract and where that hasn't been finalized yet. But I don't think it'll need to be. No, I, I, I think we just have to be close enough that we feel that we're confident that we know where the numbers are going to land. And then we say, is there enough money in the budget? If not, we need the special to increase the budget. And if there is enough money in the budget after we project the raises, then we're OK. Yeah. And all else equal, a special town meeting is something I'd rather, I'd rather not have to hold it just because it asks people to come out and in the expense of publicizing. Is there any other reason we would need a special town meeting before the annual? Okay. All right. Um, Marty, well, you, one yeah. second. Uh, Marty, you have, you have your hand up? Yeah. Okay, because I have my glasses up. Um, I would prefer not to get in the discussion of the merits of this, um, simply because I think the, int it, okay, what? Um, several months ago, the outside firm came to Oakland to get no we haven't gotten it and i was on a call with them earlier today and brought it up and they actually it was not factored in and they were going to get back to me on it i believe they're scheduled to complete the update on the master plan in december okay, okay. yeah but that that's definitely something the master plan if, if the master it would not look good if the master plan did not in, did not declare that that would be a goal for us to go for. Why? They didn't. They didn't even know, they know it was an option. Okay, yeah. I, I guess I guess maybe I'd turn that around and say it would. I think it would help us if it were on there. But if if yeah, it's too it, late, it, it's too late. It would help us if it was on there and they could get some feedback. Well, again, again, we still have the option. We could communicate with them and, and if we put it on the agenda for a public hearing in one of our meetings between now and December we could potentially at least get that input for them mm -hmm. and yeah. have them either included or not included so okay Don quickly yeah quickly um, I know a little bit about the history on this this has been around for about 10 years it really started to get traction in 2017 and I have a friend that's worked on this since the beginning I uh, actually got an email from him about three weeks ago, uh, and his comment was because I asked him about uh, this is a high speed rail system. They're selling it as a high speed rail system. There are nine stops from Springfield to South Station. Um, and his, his uh, comment was there was a lot of political pressure to include more stops, uh, but the planners consistently re reinforced the point that it's high speed service mm -hmm. they resistant to add more. I, I don't disagree with any of your comments. I think that you know economically it's it's maybe uphill down. That's just And I'll probably flush it out real quick because 
they got me now in touch with DOT in the person that is doing that. They said it, it's still on the table, we could talk about it, but right. to your point, it's probably an uphill battle. Can I, can I raise a point to this? Mm -hmm. If you look at this state house, any legislature with clout will override those state bureaucrats, and they get really upset when they put pet projects into the state house and pass this legislation. So if you had the lobbying campaign and the marketing campaign, you could override them. I will agree to you that it will be an uphill challenge to do so. But the first step is, does the town support this idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the fact that it's an uphill battle just doesn't detract from the idea of um, seeing if there's support to make it happen. Right. Okay. Just keep me apprised you know, mm -hmm. if you do a public hearing. You know where I am. <laughs> you do. I have a question. Uh, Yes, you will let me speak. You let everyone else speak, so I will speak. You, you know what, what? Mr. Holcraft? What? Tell me. Talk you, at, you, you said you wanted to speak, and then before I could even say yes or no, you start whining and bleeding on no, about your need, need to... Speak. Excuse me, Mr. Holcraft. I am, I am talking, mm -hmm. and you're saying, oh, everyone else got to talk, don't I get to talk? And you didn't even let me say yes first. I had yes in my head, but before you let me respond to you, you go on. So I will allow you to speak because I intended to allow you to speak. But I will ask you, when you ask to speak, just ask to speak. Other people allowed to speak? Let me say yes before you complain that you're getting a no answer. Please. Okay, first of all, Thank I you. Second you. of all, I wasn't complaining. And I watched your face and every time I'd like to speak in this room, you make a big to-do about it. Okay? So I make my point to you tonight. Now, James, what if we have this rail service come to our town? What is it going to do? to us economically, financially? Is it going to help us lower our taxes or are we going to get, well, what's it going to do besides getting a lot of traffic? I'm not opposed to it, I think it's great. But what's it going to do for us economically? Dollars yeah. and cents. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One well, second, I, I, Mr. Cook? Uh, would you please give him a very brief answer because I believe the substance of this discussion is more appropriate for where we're discussing okay. input from the town. True. You just heard Al speak about the fact that we don't have a big business tax base in this town. You tell me how else we're going to get one. That's all I got to say. Okay. <laughs> thank you. It's just, That's it. All right. Let's thank you. And Mr. Holcraft, I, you have a valid point. My concern is that that is a discussion that is more for when we're finding out and people in the town are learning about this. And that is going to happen. It's going to happen in the future. But I do want to make sure this meeting finishes in a reasonable amount of time. Okay? That's fine. All right. Thank you. I just, no, I, I, and it's, it's a good question. I just didn't want, I didn't. I want to contain the discussion. Thank you for a later date. All right. So uh, let's see. And I don't. I don't think there's any call to action on us. All right. So that's number two. Uh, number three. The uh, update on secondary operator. The uh, my understanding is the water department isn't ready, so we will not be. Um, we're just going to skip that one. And now the uh, item agenda item number four. The uh, hiring process for the highway superintendent. And Kelly will take the lead. So. We hired a third party recruiter. Um, they have all the applications for the superintendent that we received, and now all applications are being sent directly to them. Um, I emailed you out a job description that they wanted us to review before they posted. Um, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at it. There's, there's a proposed ad, there should be a proposed advertisement. Is it in the packet? I didn't put it in the bag now because you sent it, but I did print out a few boxes, so that's one thing to do. I sent them after I sent it out. I had a heck of a time finding them. And there was also a sample of a, uh, an advertisement packet. Mm -hmm. uh, just so you know what to expect. Right. I've already explained to them uh, that we have to have based on our bylaw, it has to be posted in the local paper and gave them the two papers we typically use for them to post it. Um, we already did the minimum posting required though. Correct? We did not for this job. Not for this, no. We did the interim and we did the form. We did not do this one. It was decided at the meeting, I thought we were doing all of them. I thought we were doing all of them as well. Yeah, but I, thought that's what I we think voted. that at the end you voted not to because you would be duplicating the cost because you're already giving them a $1,000 advertising budget. Yeah. 
And I, I think that at the end you did, you did not. And I, I have to look at the minutes to see how it wound up. My recollection well, was that we were no, accelerating. I, the way I recall, we were okay. going to post it anyway because of the fact that it was going to, like, it was pause the clock. It was posted. It just wasn't advertised. The no, no, we were supposed to advertise it because we wanted to start the clock even though the recruiter was doing it or would potentially follow up and do additional postings. That was my memory. Okay, so that's a little yeah. disappointing because I, I think we were very – what I recall is very explicit that we that the intent was to get this posted that anything we got in from our posting we would forward to the recruiter so that we could actually we get did started post it. we just didn't no, no, no it but I mean post when, I, when I'm saying po I'm, I apologize my language is imprecise okay but when I say posted I mean both posted and in the paper very explicitly so that by the first if we had applications that we could be closing on this and starting to have a real discussion, you know, that whatever we had gotten in, we would have at least met the minimum requirements so they could start their screening and then we could actually start reviewing the outputs from their phone screen so that we're not waiting and, and not even able to look at stuff until the middle of December. I thought you did that very, with the interim. No, I thought we were supposed to do it with both because what we had we were said. very specific about the interim and the deadline was yesterday to submit applications for the interim. Yeah. Right, but the but my recollection of that meeting is that we were supposed to post all three post, and when I say post, I mean both post and put in the paper per to meet the minimum requirements of our bylaw as soon as possible, so that we're not sitting on our hands if we have the right candidate come across our desk relative to um, what's going into the recruiter. That was the ex that, as far as I recall, that was the exact conversation that we had. So, if if we haven't gotten something in the paper yet for the permanent position, then it needs to get in yesterday, whether it's through us or whether it's through the recruiter. In my opinion, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what I think we voted. Okay, my my recollection was that the the thought was that since the we would be advertising through the recruiter, that we were deferring the <coughs> excuse me advertising of the permanent position, but. It's like we can, I, but we'll. I thought we'll at the very end that that was, but we can watch the meeting and find out exactly what happened, regardless, yeah. um, because it, it wasn't. So this is what the recruiter has for a posting for all the other places that they listed to post the position. So. So what do we, we've got a, I can't read the name of this document, but we've got the, basically the job description that the recruiter wants to post and then a list of um, places that they want to advertise. Yeah, it's an example of where they advertise. An example of where they advertise, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've read the job description they put out. It, it, it looks fine to me. Um, so first of all, no, Boston Monster, no, I mean, I hate to put it this way, Boston Monster is crap for a community like ours. So, um, I mean, we, we can do it for $275, but every time we've posted a town job on Monster, we get horrible applicants. Okay. Um, I'll defer to your experience with them, advertising with them. I don't see them. our local papers. Right, because that's a sample. Okay. And then when I got the sample, I sent them what our local papers are. Okay, and were they so that? Them? Yeah, they, they, they understood from the beginning that they would have to advertise in the local paper. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, we can do, and if I was going to do Monster, I would say it should be, um, they can focus it either around Worcester or Springfield. I think that's a safer bet in terms of trying to find candidates that are local to here. Because Boston's like another world. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we don't have I mean, to advertise. <laughs> yeah, when, when me and Mr. Cook agree on something, then you know that it's probably right. <laughs> All right. Chris? Yeah, I guess just a clarification. On the town website, it does say that you guys are closing the applications on November 9th, that, that you're not going to accept any more applications after that date. And um, I've already given you guys a full page. Well, it should, paper, it should say about. until filled. It says until filled or November 9th. It says it does say both. Okay. So, and 
you, our, 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 our paper comes out tomorrow. You guys have a full page on that, so if that helps your clock start ticking. Um, Does he count? He's a local paper. He is a local paper. So Thank they, you. There you go. So that's a start. Yes? I'm curious to know how much you're spending to have this agency look and find the new highway for the mm -hmm. Kelly, what was the expected amount? I don't have the contract in front of me. Okay. I, I, it's $105 an hour, and they estimated around $3,500. $3,500. $3, roughly $3,500 was the estimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's that money coming from? I believe there's some money in the select board budget, and there's some money in the highway department budget. I think the, uh, I mean, the intention is that the board Given the uh, tough recruiting environment, the uh, decision was that um, we could use all the help we can get to find someone. And if this helps us find the right person faster, then it could be money well spent. It's like, I it. I, it's, it, it may, it's like I can't promise it's going to work out. I can't promise that we're going to, it's like, but the idea is we're trying to improve our odds. It's easy to second guess you guys, and that's not what I'm doing, but mm -hmm. I just think. Well, well, I think I, I, I think the the appeal of the recruiter was the network of people that they have placed and they have relationships with that uh, could be that the expectation is that it's fairly extensive and so they can talk to people that they've interviewed and either didn't place but say do you know someone interested in this or they could talk to someone that they and they can talk to people that they've placed before and who are maybe looking for something new. Yeah, my my in my experience, the, the I, you you say what you want for ideal, and then people who think they get close will apply for it, and mm -hmm. you see you see how close you can you say here's my target, and if you're in there, jump right in, and other people say well I'm here I'm here I'm here, and you get the people way out there. It's like go away. So right? yeah, and actually, although I mean one of the things that I would say is I don't know that we're really, I don't know that that does describe our ideal candidate. Well, this is why I'm having, I'm having a look at it. Yeah, <laughs> no, and, and so actually that that's you, a good you, point because, you can because, 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 yeah. because, because, so because, do we, because, we, because, because, because good, good point, it's like, do we, do we want to, do we want to shift this to a more practical, more so, hands-on? So, well, yeah, so I think, I think that's, I think that's legitimate feedback, right? So that's one of the reasons that yeah, and, I, and that's, that's exactly one of the reasons. In front of yeah, mm -hmm. because it did seem like it was geared toward a very big town, not toward us. And he didn't use the one that we posted on the other. I don't think that that matches what we posted. Yeah. So I, I mean, I would come back to them and just tell them to use what we posted because I think it's a better representation of. of I mean, clearly we've already aligned on that describes what our candidate would look like. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, do you want a motion to that effect, or is this discussion adequate, Mr. Chair? Um, I think the discussion's adequate. If we, well, if know, we want to vote, gonna, we can, gonna, gonna, you want to vote? Actually, I want to make a couple of motions. First, sure. I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we use the town authored um, 
job posting description uh, and that it be posted within that it that it be submitted to the appropriate at least one appropriate newspaper two appropriate newspapers within the next two working days whether it's by the town or by the uh, the recruiter I was at a point before where I was recused. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Right. This is so on the I think I could stuff. still talk about those. Right. So, 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 well, and, and, and it's not for me to say, Mr. Chair, mm. but I'm, I'm going to give my opinion regarding that. So you mm. recused yourself based off of prior issues with the last person. This is a totally different issue. Well, the yeah. Hiring, the fresh hiring of somebody new functionally mm. off the street. I more recused myself to make sure that it wasn't perceived that I was trying to hire my own people and the committee, I mean, into the yeah, well, department. Uh, quite frankly, that's one of the reasons why we're not going with a local town committee, because I think that there's always the risk of a perception that you stop the committee and then you wind up steering it towards some end conclusion, even if it hypothetically is supposed to keep you out of the mix. So that's the whole reason why we went with a third. My re recollection, recollection of the discussion was that one of our primary purposes in going with a third party agency is the fact that it takes all of the local town politics off the table. And I understand the experience and the value of that experience and people connected to the community, but this also can turn into a bunch of BS that gets tossed around and, and just all kind of stupid. So um, so I'd like to, like I said, I'd like to make a motion that we use our, that we indicate to the recruiters that they use our description as posted on the town website and that it be, that it be submitted for publication in the paper within two working days, and I think that still gets us into the Turley papers, the, the Monday deadline. Um, it's, it's, they change it to a Friday deadline. <laughs> okay, so then yeah. the recruiter can get it submitted tomorrow even if we ain't here, correct? Well, I could. Or do you want I, me to submit it? I can put it together and email it over before I leave today. Okay, I'm the, I'm the clerk. If I need in. to email it over, let me know. Well, why don't I email it over and I'll CC you so when she can CC you back a confirmation. Outstanding, I can get it. I can okay. get it. Okay, and I'll look for my town email tomorrow. Thank you. All right, so we have a, we have a motion to um, use, the, use the job description. And so, Brad, um, I, I, will, I will second the motion if you're going to recuse yourself, Brad. That, that's your decision. I'm, I can't make it for you, but. Uh, yeah, this is what the town had already approved, so that might be where you're going. Yeah, it looks yeah. the same as what's on well, there. Well, it says required and then preferred. And the right. problem, so the, the challenge is, is that this is written in a very explicit way. Right. And the, and well, we the difference is. we don't want the ad to be that big, though. Right. That is huge. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. So I think mm -hmm. one of the things, okay, so then we're going to have to go through somewhat line by line and, and make the edits on this. I see why. Okay. Well, what we did before is we just said, Gave them the, the newspaper one. Yeah, the newspaper one just said go online and there's all the rest of the details. Yeah. And they can do it that way and they can come back to that. Yeah. If, they, if they use the ad that we used for the interim function. Yeah. 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 So okay. just, all right. Yeah. Send yeah. that over to Beth. Yeah. So yeah. submit for tomorrow. Because so I so can, I, can, I, can I amend the, uh, my motion? Yeah, it's, it, it wasn't seconded, so ju okay. just make a new motion. All right, so my motion is that we indicate to the recruiter that they use the very, uh, let's call it sparse, um, uh, posting, uh, sub, uh, similar to the one submitted for the interim superintendent that redirects people to the website um, and that we get that in the paper, get that submitted no later than functionally tomorrow. Um, and that if they want a, you know, for some of these other, well, let's just start there. That's the newspaper one. There's, we, we can talk about these separate publications separately because mm -hmm. I don't know that these yeah, let's actually have a, um, I don't know if those actually have like a word count. Yeah. Okay. So we have a, so we, oh, hold on. So we have a motion to uh, use a certain job description. Um, Brad, on the expectation that you, are you are you continuing to recuse yourself? Can I make a comment, please? Oh, 
Well, one second, I, I gotta get at this motion. Okay, um, all right, I will second the motion while you decide whether you're gonna right. recuse yourself. It's all like, right. it's just, I don't wanna second it if you're gonna participate, but I, I wanna move this forward for discussion. Okay, so we have a motion, it's seconded. Uh, Kermit, quickly. Uh, I know Mr. Elsky <clears throat> has recused himself. Uh, and I can't speak for him, but he is, uh, this is a significant decision that Tom is making. I think you need three people to vote on it. I think there is not any uh, select board member more than Mr. Kodelsky that knows what's going on at the highway department. Mm -hmm. He's worked with them. I hope he would reconsider yeah. his recusal. Okay. To um, the town and be part right. of this. I, I believe it's like it's it's his decision. Um, feel, I would encourage you to uh, to discuss it with him uh, directly and that it's a um and he can at a later time decide to um end his recusal or whatever the right terminology is so his recusal now i don't think prohibits him from changing his mind but i could be wrong this is not my area of expertise i agree uh, let's see but i mean i mean ideally I, but fundamentally the board the board is a three-member board and with brad recusing himself the remaining members could become deadlocked we'll we'll worry about that when the time to vote comes if brad recuses himself and and beth and i have different ideas it's um we'll figure we'll figure it out i'm not i, I don't know that we need him to say oh well there might be a problem it's like it's his call i guess is what i'm saying so no. is there any is there any am i allowed kelly am i allowed to do that Stop refusing yourself? Yes. That's our personal choice. It's not a requirement. Yes. All right. Okay, um, Beth, oh, hold on, Dave. Uh, Beth, you said the short description in the uh, interim superintendent position posted on the website? No, not the one posted on the website, the one that we used with the paper. Oh, the very short discussion that we put in there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, that's, I, okay, I, I know what that is. That just references back to the, yeah, it just, to, just references back to this to the job description um i am or we can start I, editing i my, my my concern is i'm hesitant to say for us to take a resolution and say we're going to do it this way without consulting with the uh, the mri people to say where they may say that's not the best way to do it what, what? So, I'm sorry, what? <coughs> he's, a, he's concerned that we won't be leveraging their experience in properly writing advertising in order to, to attract the best candidate. Gotcha. So, yeah. so, is, so here's my concern. I would like to get mm. that advertisement out mm. tomorrow mm -hmm. yeah, as soon into as the papers. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't stop us for the rest of these advertising locations mm -hmm. to put a more detailed thing that's more like what they provided us but with some very okay. key verbiage differences okay so that's this is like a phased approach yeah, right from to support one another for, I, I would say for for the advertisement in the paper i'm happy with going with something very similar to the um to the interim superintendent that points back to the uh, full job description and that starts the advert that starts the advertising clock yep. and and allows us to move forward and in conjunction with that, we can work with the uh, we can we can work with the MRI on additional ads or, or the uh, the copy for additional ads that they put out in the in the other places. I mean, hold on, uh, Lindsay, we had a question. I think Yeah. yeah, we can move the deadline. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, but did, uh, thank you, Dave. Yes, I uh, go ahead. Quick thank question. You, Mr. Chairman. Brad, I don't understand why you are recusing yourself. We have three elected select meeting afternoons. There's no reason why you should recuse yourself. Mr. Chairman, three. Uh, but, 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 Mm. Uh, hold on, no. Um, Mr. 
I think you should just weigh in, my dear two gentlemen, to spoke to. I don't know what your reason is, but. Okay. okay. Do I just give my reason. Okay, um, uh, Brad. 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 Okay, I, I would like to speak to the room. Mr. Kadelsky's decision to recuse himself is his own. It is not the me. It is not the business of the board that he recuses himself. I will ask everyone here to talk to Brad individually about his decision to recuse himself, and allow the board to focus on the board's business. Until Brad changes his mind, I will respect his decision to recuse himself, and the board will manage its business as best it can without his advice and insight. <coughs> Thank you. Because yeah, otherwise we're just going to keep going on and people are going to keep asking him why he's recusing himself and that's not what we're here for today. We want to move forward on getting, uh, getting someone hired and let's make this, let's, let's get the next thing off our list so we can get closer to hired and have a new superintendent here who is qualified, good for the town and makes as many people as happy as possible. Most importantly, me. All right. So, so it, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. It, we need to move on to the interim. Uh, is it, that's what I'm waiting for. Right. So, I, well, what? Yeah, I was mm -hmm. just, I was just very quickly rewriting the middle paragraph. I was actually looking at this. The ad's not terrible, except for that middle block, right? And and the reason why it's very important. Like a minimum ad is safe because then they go and they can read like the big long one that we have online, right? Mm -hmm. If we do want something a little bit more comprehensive for some of like these online venues and what have you, mm -hmm. um, when you're doing mm -hmm. recruiting, you 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 have to people self screen. Mm -hmm. Although typically yes. speaking, where this is going to be gender skewed male, they tend to self screen less. But that's a story for another day. Um, <laughs> but. Um, that that being said, right, um, I'm most of the way through rewriting that middle block, okay, and then and we can then we can move on. Once okay. we, well, once hold on, but that. Beth, we do have a motion that's been seconded about the okay. advertisement that's going into what I expect is going to be the Telegram and Gazette, okay. where we use the very compact language um, that this um, that we style that we used for the yep. interim superintendent Perfect. and use that, and so. It's like I'd let, and so my thought is, let's make a decision on that, and then we can maybe do a little wordsmithing on what um, MRI proposed for their advertising campaign, the uh, the medium length description, which I think is what you're working on now, the medium yeah. length description. Okay. So, uh, do you have any more dis discussion on the uh, short advertising for no. Telegram? Okay. All in favor of advertising in the Telegram and uh, so in. in Oh, well, I thought I thought we were going for Telegram to, to well, we need for local speed. Paper, so Turley and him would count as two, right? So. Okay, for advertising in the examiner and in Turley. So would it be helpful for me to unrecuse myself so I can assist in this and get it posted? Um, your your help your assistance would be helpful, right. but I believe that your <laughs> it, it's like it's your decision as to whether you, you, the. The need for your help doesn't change the need for you to recuse yourself. That's something that yeah. I think that you have to decide. <laughs> Under, uh, I can't help you there, Brad. All right. So, so uh, I will not. I will not. It is he is responsible for deciding whether he should recuse himself. I will not pester him on this matter. I will respect his decision. Could you? Yes. Please read the motion back because she has it written differently than what you would say. Okay. The motion to indicate that the recruiter uses sponsor postings similar to the one submitted for the interim that directs people to the website. Okay. Yes. Okay. That is. Go ahead, Beth. Well, I think what I I think what I said is that whether it's posted by the recruiter or by us, that it be posted within 24 hours in, in the paper. Yes. Okay. But that okay. was it. I don't care how we get it executed. All right. So. So do we want to amend the, do we want to amend the motion or just move or shut this one or shut this one down and make a new one indicating that we want the uh, the sparse well, if it's seconded then I probably need to amend it. Yeah, I was going to say we can either amend it or we could vote to not do it and then start new with a fresh one. I don't have a preference. All right, let's 
Well, it's your meeting. Well, well, then why, why don't we vote no and then start over? Because I think amending is going to be right, slower. No. Okay, all in favor of the motion to instruct the recruiter to use the short form language, uh, please say aye. All opposed, please say no. 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 All right, the motion does not pass. All right. All right. Uh, I make a motion that we, that we ensure that within the next 24 hours, whether via the town directly or via the recruiter, that the short form posting used for the interim superintendent be adjusted to reflect the permanent superintendent and that it be posted and that it be submitted for publication with Turley and with the Brookfield Examiner. Is that what yeah, it is? Yes. Okay. Uh, within the next 20, within the next 20, uh, be submitted to both entities within the next 24 hours for the earliest possible publication. Did you get that? That's a lot of words. <laughs> However, it is pretty explicit into what the goal is. So, okay. Motion right. to ensure within the next 24 hours, whether by a town or recruiter, the short form posting for the interim reflects the permanent superintendent be submitted to Turley and the examiner within the next 24 hours of the earliest publication. All right. All right. I will second that motion. All right, any more, any discussion? Beth? No, I was gonna say, you made the motion. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, all in favor of what? Go ahead. What? So on the topic of unrecusing myself. No, 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 ahead. can you, can you, no, go, I, go, I shut go, that go, down. Go. All right, um, all in favor of uh, Beth's motion to, um, to get this ad out as soon as possible, um, as discussed, please say aye. Aye. All right, let me also submit a, a second motion that that the that uh, the that we clearly reflect the deadline to be um, two weeks hence, I guess. Or from from, from, date, from of publication. Publication, date of publication. Which for Charlie is actually gonna be what it comes out on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, yeah. well, wait, well, it comes up on Thursday. Thursday, so it'd be, it needs to reflect two weeks from Thursday. So that would be Thanksgiving, because it's published next oh, Thursday. Right. Yeah. Which is. Doesn't matter. I was going to say, we, we can require it, no one's going to look at it until the following Monday. Okay, so then the, make, so Why don't we make it the following Monday? That's yeah. Fine. Two weeks from. That would be like the Monday the 29th. Get it tomorrow. It comes out next Thursday. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I think the two weeks starts ticking next Thursday when the ad is published. Or does it start pub oh, no, actually it starts it starts with with the examiner. No, I, I said it was going to be I we said it the two weeks from publication is Thanksgiving and so we said the Monday after Thanksgiving. Does the Brookfield Examiner count? I don't know. Is it a, is it a local paper? It is. I, it's a local newspaper. This corporation is a newspaper. It is local newspaper. Then it is, is, if it is a local newspaper, because that is what the bylaw says. It has to be a paper of local circulation. Everybody's going to get it. <laughs> exactly. I, Everybody's going to get it. <laughs> but this is I am. I am. With with all, with all respect to the to the examiner and uh, and and Chris, given the um, short history of the paper, I am just. That is not a requirement. So you, you have a lovely paper, but it is not actually part of the legal requirement. So does it qualify if it is a local paper, regardless of its history? Yes. If you want to make it. Want to make it the date of the other one? That's mm -hmm. perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Mr. Mr. Kelleher, what is the next publication date of the examiner? Tomorrow, and you guys got a full page ad. All right. As it is listed on your website. All right. Thank you. Oh. It's already printed. All right. <laughs> it's already printed. <laughs> it's already go, it's going it's out whether we do it or not. All right. So let's see. So that and tomorrow is the third, which would technically mean the seventeenth. So we so we could just close it on. The Close it on the seventh. On the seventeenth or the twentieth? The Monday of before Thanksgiving? Yeah, let's do the Monday before Thanksgiving. I think that's I think that's prudent. Okay. All right. Except that's your part of the 
motion, correct? No, see, yeah, so the, yeah, the, that the that the uh, closing date on on all copies be shifted to the twentieth in order to accommodate the two weeks of posting. Mm -hmm. Karen, what's the motion again? It's like, I just want to make sure I know what I'm voting on. They only reflect the deadline to be two weeks from, to the, reflect the deadline to be a closing date on all copies 11 2023. Excellent. Beth, any questions? Or yes. any, any more discussion? All right, all in favor of the motion to uh, have the closing date of this, of the permanent position be 11 2023, please say aye. 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 Thank you, that takes care. All right, so, Kelly, is there anything else we need to do for the permanent, uh, for the permanent superintendent position? No. Okay. So, so I'm not throwing this tire. Can, 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 can I make a recommendation, though? I'd actually like to make one more motion. Go ahead. That we provide edits back to the uh, uh, recruiting agency to replace the paragraph. Because the rest of it looks actually pretty okay, yeah. but the uh, to replace the ideal candidate paragraph with the ideal candidate will be an active and hands-on working done. superintendent. Minimum requirements are a high school diploma, satisfactory driving record with CDL, and applicable hoisting licenses. Uh, five to seven years of progressive responsible experience, and then the language should continue uh, through the end of that sentence with all of the existing verbiage. So basically, instead of saying the ideal candidate will have a bachelor's degree um, and five to it, it more just high school diploma, five to seven years of progressive experience. Yeah, and, and we could put, you know, um, we could put something to the effect of, of uh, some experience maybe substituted for a bachelor of science in, in yeah. civil engineering or up to two years credit, even though it's a four year degree. Put something mm -hmm. along the lines of here, let me write that down. Is, uh, uh, a, you know that it, it a, that a uh, civ, that a bachelor's in civil engineering may be substituted for up to two years of the experience. Because you know what, honestly, if we found somebody with a civil engineering degree and some education, that'd be great. But that's not the primary focus of that position, and that yeah. leaves that ability for somebody that has that qualification but doesn't mind getting their knuckles dirty to actually like apply mm -hmm. you're not mm -hmm. going to probably get a civil engineer for seventy three thousand dollars but we can dream no. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. yes oh we did well there you go we have an applicant in the pool that that has it so there you go yeah um, ask and you shall yeah. receive all right can i see the when you get a moment can i just read your verbiage because i do much better reading than listening as my wife always tells me. <laughs> I, 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 I saw you getting ready. I'm going, oh, I better cut that off. Uh, uh, yes, yes, Dave. Um, do you have any applicants currently right now? And if you do, how many do you have? Uh, my understanding is we have applicants. I believe we have, Kelly, we have three applicants? Or can, you, can we say how many applicants we have? I don't know how many applicants we have. We had three when I sent them to the recruiter, but I have no idea how many since okay. sending okay. So we, ha we have at least three candidates and yes. additional candidates may have come in directly to MRI and we have not been, we are not aware of those. Correct. All right, thank you. I have one more question. Sure. Is the recruiter gonna, why are you sending them to the recruiter? Is he gonna make the decision or he's gonna make No, they screen, they pre-screen. I believe, I believe the expectation, one of the things we pay the recruiter for is to screen them. So if you've got someone who's a, a laborer with no supervisory experience, it's like those probably, I expect those would not come to our attention okay. simply because they are severely underqualified mm -hmm. for, the, for what we need. All right, thank you, Beth. Um, all right, and if I did not, I will second your motion for um, that for modifying that paragraph. 
and I'm good with it. So all in favor of the uh, proposed edits that uh, Beth has made, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And I believe, Beth, does that close us off on these permanent positions? All set. Thank you for your diligence and attention. Um, Kelly, interim was next? Yes. Or so interim is next. The cutoff was yesterday for the interim. Um, the, we received three applications. How would you like to proceed with this? Do you want to get the applications and review them and then each bring a top pick? Because you don't have to interview all of them. You can choose to interview one of them. Um, applications are not public information mm -hmm. until you fit, pick a finalist. So you can go into executive session to discuss the applications, um, but if you are going to interview and the finalist is public, so that has to be done in open session. The finalist or finalists? Depends on your choice. Okay. Do you want to bring one or do you want to bring two? Okay. And, That's and, and do the interview in public. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to assign one of you to take on the responsibility and do the pre-screening and bring your recommendation? So that's, that's what you need to do is decide how you want to proceed with this process. Yeah, I'm, I, am, I am of the opinion that more eyes are better than fewer eyes. So I'm inclined to have us both look at them and then in conjunction with a, uh, it's like, I know we have an executive session planned for next week with the uh, police contract. We could also discuss that Which then. How are we going to do that on Tuesday? That I believe. Noontime. Yeah, I, believe, I believe we're looking to do it at noon. Brad, you're, you're going to zoom in if, you, if you're available, if your schedule permits? Yeah. Okay. Let me just double check that on something crazy. And then, uh, Kelly, question. I will double check with town council to make sure that that is correct. I know that they're not public. Mm -hmm. No, I think you're correct. Is it? I, I, I believe think you're correct. You can do the initial um, in, in the executive session, so. Yeah. Is it possible for us to um to anonymize the applications and consult with people uh consult outside the select board or is no. that no okay I, i've never done this before i'm asking silly questions okay and, and um, next tuesday looks good for me all right rich i would like to know why <laughs> no. So, well, no. Do I agree that the highway department in the last three weeks has been incredibly self-sufficient and, and, and okay with getting things done without leadership? Yes. There are certain things, though, that we're not capable of doing, which one thing will be on the next agenda on the 16th, such as signatures for releasing um, bonds for driving permits, for instance. But um, do I yeah. think in a whole we're doing great? Yeah. I was a little yeah. skeptical, but I, it's been amazing. We have yeah. I mean, Rich. I, I mean, to answer your to answer your question, uh, the, the 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 speaking for myself, the concern was it's like we, I, I I had confidence and hope that the highway department, the the current highway department employees would step up and would execute flawlessly, or execute no, flawlessly. I haven't I haven't seen a problem yet, so I'll say flawlessly. Uh, I'm sure that I'm sure there's some things happening that I didn't see and little oopsies, but we got it fixed. And so, but the not knowing how long it would take for us to find a permanent superintendent, the thought was that it would be negligent to not investigate this. Now, I, I, I won't dispute your points, and I would say that, speaking for myself, I, I can't speak for the board, is that if 
the, in, the, the candidates for interim, none of them look particularly good, then we certainly do have the option of not filling it and continuing with the status quo until we find a permanent. It's the fact that we're uh, advertising for it, to my mind, does not commit us to it, to, the, to this path. But the thought, but the thought is, is that in order to ensure that the highway department has what they need, because the longer they go without a superintendent and someone with superintendent experience or, or the ability to step into it, because they don't have a foreman and they don't have a superintendent. And so, and I say it would be not negligent, but it would be asking a lot of them, in my opinion, again, to options, go without a superintendent. Uh, options good, shorthanded, bad. Can I just say one more question? <laughs> so, four and a half years ago, you didn't have a highway superintendent, you didn't have a foreman. Donald Herbert was only permitted to, he was only bumped up to <coughs> foreman a short time ago. When the select board at the time asked Donald to fill in and do the thing, everything was done. Mike Newball is down there. And at the time, Donald Herbert could boosted up, you got a couple bucks more an hour. If you guys suck down there, put Mike Newball into the top position, allow him to give the sign off the driveway permit. The guy is more than capable. He's capable of doing a lot more than what you guys are asking. You guys haven't asked him that thing. You gotta you need more communication. The last time I was in here in support of Ryan, I got I asked you guys to communicate more with those guys. There's no communication going on down there, very little, if any. You got, you got three guys down there right now that can run this department mm -hmm. until you hire some. You just okay. wasted more money to hire an interim. Just throw a guy mm -hmm. a couple bucks an hour more and be more than happy. Communicate with him, mm -hmm. and you guys would have yourself a fine form until you have a new highway to the super. <coughs> All right. The communication Thank you. is the key. That's, that's my advice to you. All right. Thank you. So, so uh, hold on. Can, can you hold on a minute? Because it's, it's like we just we, it's like we just gave a lot of time to the floor, and I, I will come back to you. But so for the um, so for the inter so for the interim superintendent, we have the applications. It's like we do want to we, we should decide how we're going to uh, evaluate the candidates. Mm -hmm. And so I, I mean that that's <clears throat> excuse me that's I think I think I've made my thoughts known. Beth, are you okay? Are you you willing to you willing to go forward that way? Do you have a different idea that you think is better in terms I think of it's how? Worth reviewing. What's that? I said I think it's worth reviewing the candidates as part of the session Tuesday, and we can make a decision about whether to pursue any or not. Okay. So add the executive right. session. So yeah, so add that to the executive session. Yep. Please. Okay. And we don't uh, we don't need a motion on that, do we? Don't need a vote. No. Okay. Um, to an agenda, right? Yeah, we're yeah. just adding something. You don't need a motion to add something to an agenda. Yeah, just put it on the agenda. Okay, um, great. Just as clarification, the, I believe when you discussed mm -hmm. hiring an interim, it was simply to give the appropriate amount of time to get the correct person for the department and not leave them shorthanded. Yeah, not be it's under the gun because to find somebody. Yep. It's still another body in the truck. Mm hmm. Which is one of the things that we need. Yeah, is given that it's a working yeah. position. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're spread thin. They're doing a great job. Yes, but they're spread thin, and that's, that's, yeah. that's the crap. So we're, we're asking them to run hot. And so that was, that was why. Mm -hmm. So that you take your time getting the <coughs> actual full time super, mm -hmm. knowing that they've got the extra support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave, yes. I just want to remind the town here that it wasn't that long ago we had two guys running this whole town from the highway traffic. Okay, For thank years you. years and years and years, the town hasn't expanded that much. All right. So we're not in that bad of shape right, right at this current moment. All right. Thank you. All right, so, Kelly, do we need to decide anything else on the interim superintendent, or we, no, we have a path forward on that? All right, and we have a path forward on the permanent. Um, is there anything else we need to discuss on we the... Okay. Um, when did that? And uh, that came in I think a week ago. Do you want to look at that, or do you want to wait until you have your um, super in there 
and have them involved in the decision. So that's something you need to talk about as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's another position of closeness to what, the nine? So, or did we close so the second one, I throw this little iron into the fire. So we have to have the, the job posted at least two weeks prior to the closing. That is not a restriction on when it has to close. So yes, we have it out for two weeks. If you want it to close okay. at the end of those two weeks, you can. If you want it to close four months from now, that's mm -hmm. fine because it's not. It's, can we? It's is not, there? It's it, not a, a, is, Stop yeah. Is there, is there any restriction to us evalu evalu leaving it open until we find a candidate that we like, for want of a better term? Are you talking about the foreman? I, I, so uh, this is specifically in the context of the foreman. Okay. Um, please restate the question. Um, is there any reason we could not leave the position open until we find a candidate that we like? No, there is not. Okay. So, so my thought is that we, it's like, then my thought is, mm. so the question is, do we fill the foreman position and present that filled position to the superintendent candidates, or do we defer filling it and allow the superintendent candidates to? That candidates. Or, or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, yes, the, the, the hire, you're right. The, the candidates would not have a decision. The selected candidate who is hired would have and allow them to have input in the decision. That was, that's my question to you. Mm -hmm. Um, I am, my answer to that is complicated. You the application at the, at yes. the executive session. And yes. Your Karen, would you add that to the executive session? I, I'd like to review the, <clears throat> I'd like to review the application. Because my thought is, if it, yeah, if, if we if if we if we have a very if we have a very strong candidate, I would um, it's like I would say if we if we have a rock star, then it's like I would say yeah, then the new superintendent will have to deal with the person we consider a rock star. Whereas if it's a if it's a mediocre candidate, then it might make sense to allow, to give the uh, leave it open longer, and maybe the the sup new superintendent gets a chance, or maybe we fill it. We still fill it before they come in. So, okay. I don't know. Let's see. So, that's the end of that. All right. Thank you. All right. And uh, let's see. I will uh, point out that our self imposed 20 minute deadline is 20, I'm sorry, our self imposed two hour deadline is 20 minutes away. And we still have um, three big agenda items to discuss. Um, so, real quick, then on the recusal. Can I unrecuse myself then to be involved with that process? You may unrecuse yourself at any time. So I believe I'll unrecuse I unrecuse myself. Because you really only I recused yourself from those discussions at the time, so. Yeah, you, you can, yeah. It's like, okay, but we finished talking about highway, so right. we, can, we move on. All right, um, agenda item, um, before we go on to number five, Kelly, of five, seven, and eight, is there any that has to be done today? I would like to do seven tonight. Okay. I think we can squeeze this in. I think eight is the one that can, well, we might have to stay long. All right, well. You can make a motion uh, to extend the meeting. Yeah, so yes, we can. Let's just let's so, start with seven and then maybe go to eight. And then uh, if we have, do we need to? Well, Mr. Fromm is, Fromm, here. Mr. Mr. Fromm is here. Yes, okay. so I, I do want to respect Mr. Fromm's time since he was on well, the agenda. Let's go order, then. Let's just try to be quick. All right. All right, then let's go to community host agreement in order number five. Community host agreement. Mr. Fromm. Hey, um, come on down. Yeah, come on up. I mean, you seem to have brought a lawyer, so if you're smart, you'll let him talk. <laughs> Get your money's worth. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hi, how you doing? Good, good. I'm, I'm Kyle Sosby. I'm an attorney with Cable, Fleischer, and Sosby. And uh, I'm here with David Fromm, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so we're here to talk about um, a host community agreement for a cannabis business. Um, we did provide some some documents regarding the proposal. I, uh, I don't know if everyone has it. I don't know if anyone had a chance to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be glad to kind of give a, a quick synopsis of what we're mm -hmm. proposing. 
Um, mm -hmm. And then I'd be glad to address any questions. Okay. Um, well, my understanding is that uh, Mr. Fromm is considering several uh, lines of business, or maybe these. Maybe I'm conflating these with um, licenses from the uh, MCC. But um, CCC. they're they're uh, oh, CCC. That's right, Karen, the Cannabis Control Commission. Um, a cultivation operation, a manufacturing operation, and a retail operation. Correct. Th those are the licenses. Okay. Um, I, you know, we really see this as a single business operation. It's an mm -hmm. integrated business going from you know growing the plants to uh, processing them to selling them. Mm -hmm. uh, we see it as a, as a single operation, really, but it, it would require three separate licenses from the state. Yeah, that's from the state. That's okay. the definition yes. of vertical integration is when your entire supply chain goes soup to nuts. Mm -hmm. well, I guess soup to nuts doesn't work. Yeah. Farm to yeah. table. Farm to table. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, and I think one important thing to keep in mind is in, uh, in this situation, uh, two of these licenses would be located in the same place, which is at um, uh, 6 Molasses Hill Road. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one, that would be the cultivation and the manufacturing. The retail operation, um, or the retail store, uh, does not have a, a definite location yet. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that was in the document, but I just wanted to, to highlight that. Uh, and so that's yet to be determined. But since we really see this as one business, we think it makes sense to talk about the whole thing all together with the select board. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense. Um, I, I had a conversation with Mr. Fromm uh, at, at another town meeting, and the, uh, the, what I shared with him is that abs absent a location for the retail business is that I'm prepared to have a discussion in the abstract, but that we would need to revisit and finalize things um, when, the, when a location was found. It's like, because basically, it, depending on where it goes, we may have concerns some, we would have certain concerns for this location, we might have some separate concerns for that location. But in terms of the, re it, so lacking a retail site, I'm comfortable talking about generalities pending Mr. Fromm finding a site for that. Whereas given that he has a specific site for the cultivation and the manufacturing operation, I think we can get into much more specific details and move forward um, more productively on that. Mr. Sure. Reagan, uh, a quick question through you. Yes. Um, What's usual and customary in instances like this when a portion of the location, or so these are distinct licenses. So, so let me just make sure I understand the framework here. This is, an, this is a nominal agreement relative to the plan between the town and Mr. Fromm, functionally, right? Regarding like the host community proposal. But it does have three distinct licenses. Is, this is, this is not an actual agreement. No, no, it is not. No. That, 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 just, just from, I, I was following the, okay, the, right. the town's process right. and asked right. for the information provided, right. Right. but it, I, I, did not, I did not submit a draft um, each host community agreement. Okay. Um, and, and, and just to, this, this might address yeah, that's, that's the question. Wanted, in my, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so my, um, kind of in my experience, once the town you know, indicates a willingness to um, you know, to, to negotiate an HCA, um, uh, it's been my experience that that myself or, or whatever attorney is representing the applicant um, would then kind of negotiate the HCA with the with town council, and, and then once um, you know once an agreement seems to have been been reached, then both sides can execute it. Okay, so so all of this functionally is hypothetical right now because it's not the agreement; it's the proposal, it's the business plan, it's the outline. And it's the overall concept of operation, including the the legal entities that are going to be responsible for all this. I did have one technical question relative to this document, right? It seems odd to refer to a board of directors and have it be a sole proprietor construct. Is there a reason why it refers to the Mr. Fromm as, as multiple entities within a board of directors when functionally he's, this business plan is for a sole proprietor type uh, entity? Um, well, I mean, I would just say it's you know it's very common for a business entity to be um, owned and operated by by one person, whether it's a corporation or an LLC. Um, I, you know, I mean, I mean, there's lots of reasons that that people operate in that manner. Um, you know, th there would be nothing like there'd be no reason why there'd be nothing to prevent Mr. Fromm from bringing other people into the company 
in some sort of role, whether as, a, as an officer or a director, if he chose to do so. Okay, um, so, so, it's, so it's functionally just so that he can file as, an, as a corporation with the state is why it's, it's well, sure. constructed so, so that way. Th there are some, some requirements to get the license. Um, okay. There would be reasons to file as an entity to seek a license, yes. Okay, all right. And so, and it looks like it, this business was incorporated as a the 22nd of August, 2023. Correct? That's correct. And that's the entity that's actually applying for this. Got it. Thank you. Well, wait a second. So this is Keith Realty Corporation. So is, is that, is this Sun Fusions, do, basically <coughs> that corporation doing business as Sun Fusions? No, so, so Keith Realty Corp is the entity that, that owns, owns the, the real estate, the real property. Got it, okay. And, and, and that, that entity is, is wholly owned by Mr. Fromm. Okay. And then Sun Fusions is the entity that would seek the license from the state, the cannabis license. Okay. So one of the requirements to bringing this to you is to establish that the owner has given permission to use the property in this manner. Got it. Okay. So he's demonstrating that he is the owner of the property. Right. And so he's got so his own he's permission. He's got his own permission to. Which if you didn't have your own permission, that'd be pretty odd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty funny. So. Because a lot of times there are backers who are, yeah. and, and, and the funding comes from, and the support comes from more than one, no, one that's person. That's fine. So. Yeah, it just seemed odd to have both articles in, of incorporation. Yeah, it's, it's just proving that he owns both. Got it. It'd be really horrible if you wound up with a dispute with yourself, by the way. Won't <laughs> <laughs> be the first time. <laughs> All right, sorry, go ahead. Uh, you know, one thing I'd like to point out is that um, the host community agreement is really a, a threshold step to uh, simply to apply for the license um, from the state. Um, there's many other steps, such as seeking a special permit from Brookfield's planning board that Mr. Fromm will have to go through. I, there's, nothing in, there's nothing inherent in an HCA that promises or guarantees um, that Mr. Fromm will be successful at any of those other steps. Mm -hmm. So for instance, the, this board could agree to an HCA um, and the planning board could deny a special permit, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I, I just wanna, um, I said we, we don't, we, we wouldn't move forward if we thought that was going to happen, but um, mm -hmm. I, I just wanna make it clear, you're, you're not, um, you know, you're not binding other boards uh, to, to a certain decision by entering into an HCA. Mm -hmm. well, we can't, we can't bind. No, of course not, yeah. yes. Uh, help me understand, uh, uh, given that a lot of the concerns that come into my mind when I think of this HCA is like, okay, no, that would be the planning board. The planning board would be responsible for that in terms of like a traffic study, the, uh, the abutters, making right. sure the um, noise and such. It's like, so what is, the, what is the host community agreement intended to address here? Help me, help me understand the process and why, how we help move it along or what, we, what part of the process we're taking care of with this. Right, so, so I mean, maybe it would be helpful if, um, you know, I can kind of describe to you w what is in a typical host community agreement. Um, and I, I, it's my understanding that KP Law is town council for Brookfield? That's correct. Yes. Okay, so I actually have a, a recent HCA for, uh, that um, uh, came from KP Law. Uh, so they, your town council will have a, a template that they might um, suggest mm -hmm. that you use. Um, you know, much of it looks like a, any other legal contract, so there's a lot of you know, boilerplate, recitals, et cetera. But the, the substantive, substantive part of the HCA you know, is going to have a description of the, the community impact fees, right? And that is something provided um, by state law uh, and CCC regulations, which, uh, and that law recently changed, but now what it says is that if there are impacts to the community caused by this cannabis business, um, then the town can be uh, recompensed for those amounts up to 3% of the company's gross revenue. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of a, a promise to the town that, that you won't suffer any um, unusual detriment due to the nature of the business being, being cannabis. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's the community impact fee, right? And so there's uh, a number of pages describing the kind of how that fee works um, you know, if, if there were, if the town did decide there were impacts, how you would go about getting money back from the company, right? Uh, there's uh, 
provisions about taxes. Um, but about the bill did not adopt the tax. Okay. Um, but, but there would still be, there are other taxes that apply to any business. Mm -hmm. yes. And often the community, the host community agreements um, make it expressly clear that the cannabis business uh, must pay those taxes. And I think that kind of stems from originally cannabis businesses were nonprofits, and nonprofits uh, can be exempt from certain uh, state and local taxes, like property taxes. Um, and so these agreements say, even though you're, you know, would say even though you're a nonprofit, you still have to pay the taxes or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe something. Yeah. Um, there's prom there, you know, there's agreements in here, provisions in the contract saying that the business will use local vendors um, to the extent possible for, you know, in its business contracts that it will employ local residents um, to the extent possible, and and that's certainly Mr. Fromm's intent that this business will. Um, of course, pay its taxes and will, uh, you know, enter into contracts with local businesses and will employ residents. That's very much the hope of what will happen here, that this will uh, increase the commercial tax base and provide job opportunities for residents, um, uh, provide tax income for the town. Mm -hmm. there's, um, there's provisions uh, regarding uh, security and safety. And, and really the, the gist of what the HCA says about security and safety is that, that the company has to abide by the CCC regulations, um, which are very detailed and strict, and there's inspections both announced and surprise. Um, there's required redundancies. Um, and generally in my experience, if a company uh, is compliant with the CCC, that is satisfactory to the municipality as far as security goes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's provisions regarding, uh, for instance, what, what would happen if the community has complaints, right? And so it can lay out a process of, you know, if you have abutters or you have other community members who um, have some, have any kind of complaint, um, oftentimes it, it, there's worries about odor, right, with a cultivation. And so the HCA can describe, well, what, what would we do if there were complaints about odor, right? And so there might be a, a process of, um, you know, that there could be, we, we might have to come back before this board and um, address those complaints and um, discuss ways to mitigate, for instance. Um, some towns like to have some kind of a, an annual reporting um, from the company. Uh, there might be inspections that uh, town officials uh, would be required or, or able to do. Um, there can be you know, requirements that the company disclose emergency contact information to the town so that if there's any sort of problem that, that the town knows who to reach out to, who to communicate with. Um, there could be, you know, especially for a, a retail operation, there can be limitations on the hours of operation. Um, that's often something that the municipalities decide on, so that varies. Um, uh, there can be you know, restrictions on things, you know, like you said, much of this kind of may step on the toes of the planning board a little bit, but there can be restrictions on what kinds of lighting there can be, there can be restrictions on, uh, or requirements about uh, how waste and wastewater is handled, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, Tom, what this is is, you're initially stating to the CCC, because they need notification, that you're willing to work with the company. Mm -hmm. this, without that willingness for the town to work with the company, they, they can't proceed. Mm -hmm. So the host community agreement is the first step. And you have to have a public outreach meeting. Um, and then they go through the licensing process. And once the town has got the host community agreement. So this is this is the first step, step in the mm -hmm. chain of requirements under under the rules and the laws set up by the state. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. I just I get I guess I the process is what the process is. It's mm -hmm. just going first when things are so um, when there are so many options open is just gets me just makes me a little okay. 
Yeah, makes me makes me makes that's me that's uncomfortable. Well, you wanna, but you want to start reason. earlier rather than later. Yeah, I mean, this is this is part of the dialogue. Here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is to, is yeah. to get the, the ball rolling and get the dialogue mm -hmm. open. Okay. So. And we just maybe just have to work through it and get to the other side, and come up with agreement, and then that'll that checks the put, puts a check in the box and lets him go to the CCC to move forward to the next stage. So so and, and let me just ask a clarifying question. This is a proposal that we're talking about tonight. Do you have to have a HCA in place before you go to this to the panel? Yes. Yes. What's yes. our, what's yes. our yes. target? We have to have a, a community outreach meeting. Right. So what's prior our to go? Okay. And and do they have to have the host community agreement first yes. prior to the meeting? Okay. Yes. So um, what are, we, what are we? What are we? Can change that, right? What are we? Community and then the meeting and then. That, that, that's the typical. We have to sign off on the meeting. So, so what is our goal tonight? Like, what is the purpose tonight? Is right. So, so what I would ask of this board is to, um, I, I guess, by a vote, agree that that the town will negotiate a, a contract with the company, that being the, the host community agreement. Um, I mean, that, that negotiation won't take place right now. Um, but that. But but you, what you're looking for is a motion to to commence with the negotiation of a of an HCA. That's right, and and then and, and then what I would expect is that is that a um, a, a proposed HCA would be presented to you, um, you know, a, a short time from now by town council. Um, and then the board would decide if, if it was acceptable or not, whether to execute it. So one of the things in the, in the paperwork you received is that each license would be its own independent post community agreement. Well, so my understanding is that it would be possible to uh, combine them, and, and what I would what and I would under what where because it specifically says each would be a separate post community. Agreement. Oh well, to say that it so in what was sent to me in terms of the process. Um, uh, on number three, it says um, each activity being, I guess the license, each activity will need either a separate host agreement or a combination host agreement depending on the selectman's preference. Okay. Wrong town. Okay. So can, what, 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 can I just, yeah, so, so can I just pause real quick and make a motion to extend to nine? I don't know if we I need that much time. Did, did, did you already do that? No, I did not. I don't think she did. She, we talked about it. it. All right. All in favor of extending this meeting time until 9 p.m., please say aye. 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 No. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice she waited until we said yes before I she waited. I absolutely did. But I just wanted to, I wanted to get it on the record, okay? <laughs> Fair enough. So. Thank you. We, we have it. We have a rule of because because I don't get these meetings done fast enough it's like now they say they they put the meeting time on a leash <laughs> so, all right so if, if you prefer to do this but my my only concern with with combining all three of these is that the two are in one location the other one is not I, I don't know if a severability clause if something goes belly up in one of these if it will destroy the whole yeah, thing, the whole yeah. thing. So, yeah. I don't want to I don't want you to shoot something I, no yeah. I and, I and I actually wasn't going to suggest that they all three be on the same mm -hmm. HCA HCA um, you know especially after hearing uh, some of the board's comments w what I would propose is that the two that will be located in the same location yeah. on at uh, on Mr. Fromm's property that those be under one HCA because that's really just one on business, it's all going to be under one roof. You know, um, I think one HCA makes sense for that. Uh, the other one, the retail, uh, I, I think it would be. I think it would make sense to this board if that was a separate HCA because it seemed. You know, there will have to be some additional, perhaps some additional review once a specific location is found. Mm -hmm. So, do you know where we are in the 299 hole? What I've been, well, what I've heard. But not is, is not. The time expired yet? I don't what, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the my my understanding is that the response was sent back to the AT's office. Okay. Um, as of the end of business today, there was not anything published on the AG's municipal large site. Letter before they publish. Okay, okay. So I, I I don't have any official word, but my understanding is that's okay. that's over. And when I read when I read your proposal, it's it's assuming that he's passed and that the AG doesn't slice and dice peel and puree. 
It, it is, and, and, that, and that's a good point. That is a good point, that this proposal is, is based on the assumption that the zoning bylaws as amended um, in the, the 2023 town meeting mm -hmm. um, would in fact become the effective bylaws. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Understood. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna make a motion that we uh, agree to enter into negotiations regarding the host community agreement with uh, some fusions. For their operations and location Are at you six and less silver. Just the cultivation because you don't have a location. So in, I, I I think what we can see, I was going to leave it fundamentally leave it open is that we're entering into host community agreement negotiations. As part of those negotiations, we can once we're in them, we can limit it to the to the two that there's the actual location, or do we want? So to the, the reason I'm asking is because there's a fee that goes with each host community agreement. Okay. So if you're going to table the, the retail because there's no location, then they shouldn't be presenting presenting us with the check for that. Okay. So if there is if there is uh, if you're if you're entertaining the combined location, then so in so order to start this agreement so because yeah, town that council is that. So, so, involved and we need to chat. so I would make a I would make a motion that we enter into negotiations relative to to a single combined HCA for cultivation and manufacturing at the site. Indicated. Oh, well, I I did have a question regarding the the fee um, relative to the application. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was just a little confusing to me because it sounded like you know it was a fee for to cover the town's legal expenses, which I understand. But the way it's phrased in in this process sheet is that um, if if the applicant is a, a social equity applicant and the legal fees are less than the seventy five hundred dollars, that they would be refunded the balance. Mm -hmm. um, they'd be kind of like a retainer. But that if the applicant is not a social equity applicant, that the town would I, I guess would, would what would pocket the balance to the general fund. And I'm, I just wanted to understand what the, how the town would handle that. It was my saying there would be no I refund. They voted that when they did the social equity problem, equities, eh? I'm not going to try to say the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it would go back to the but applicant. But the policy, but the applicant, you voted to allow the social equity applicant to return, to have their funds returned, but not, to, not the, anybody the, else. The unexpended yes, funds. Correct, correct. Because there's, there's a, effectively an escrow payment or something that they yeah. put in and that covers the, uh, that is some of the town's correct. costs. Yeah, that's that's what I recall. So that's yeah. 75 for each application. Tom? Oh. Um, well, uh, can, go ahead. Uh, when, when I'm sorry, the, um, I'll just say, it, it actually wasn't clear to me that it was, I don't think the process reads that it's 7,500 per application. Um, it seems to be 7,500 per applicant. And, and I don't, it's not obvious to me that there would be. Can you read it to me? Yeah, it says, uh, it says, this is step two. It says, once the selectmen have voted to accept your proposal, uh, you will need to provide a check for $7,500 must be submitted to cover the town's expenses. If town council fees are less, the balance will be returned to CEA and SEP participants within 60 days of successful completion. And, and the reason that I read it as per applicant is because I, w whether, you know, the, the number of documents that, that are signed or executed, um, you know, I don't see that as, as being re relative to how much time that town, town council, council charges us individually for each host community agreement. Th they don't charge by by the hour. It's a flat that fee. It has not been my experience in these particular situations with this particular law. Hmm. And the town paid about three thousand dollars worth of legal fees at the last town I was in because of not getting one for each agreement. Yeah. I mean, you can vote to return the difference. It doesn't say you can't vote to return the difference. Right. But the fee should be covered. 
Right. So. Of course, fees should be covered. Different should be returned. Common sense. I don't know what mechanism we have to return the fees, so I'll have to check with the county. But whether they are or not, um, in the interest of moving forward, it's been said that you know, there's no retail location. There are about four, just haven't chosen. So I should have that for you well within the term of our negotiation. If you want to start. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is if you want to start all the HCAs, then we'll pay whatever the fee is. And then if, you, if he's got a location before we finalize on an agreement, then it's one agreement. If he doesn't have a location by the time we finalize on an agreement, then it's going to be two agreements. <laughs> well, the agreements, is it your experience that the agreements mirror each other for the for it to be different? Because there's no tax oh. on the cultivation. So that's not. That's right. I mean, right, so, so my experience is that, is, is that basically you just, it's the same agreement and then you just um, change the language of the license type and, um, you know, in this case, the, the address, right? But, um, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's hard for me to imagine how there would be, you know, very many material differences between the agreements. Well, I agree with you. <laughs> However, <laughs> she's just trying to look out for the interests of the town. No, and, and, yeah, and, 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 and I certainly respect that. Yeah, in the, in the past, yeah. Right? yeah, and and, and exactly. we're not we're not trying to sh to we're certainly not trying to short the town on. Yeah, trying to burn anybody. Yeah, it was just inexperience, not realizing the way it would be treated um, in the process. It, by the it, it seems to me that if the town wants to do two agreements, that's fine. But I really don't think KP is going to need seventy five hundred bucks for the second one after mm -hmm. having just right. done the first. I'm just right. proposing. You that. would think they would. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I would recommend, if you want to enter into negotiations, that it would be a seventy-five hundred fee for each agreement, with and then vote to return the difference. Yeah. And then that, that way we're covered and they get the money back. I'll make that motion. Works for me. Second. All right. So the the motion is to um, the motion is to. Uh, Enter into, enter, the agreement. enter into negotiations, negotiations, presuming that it's going to be two agreements, mm -hmm. but that in the, you know, in the interest of fairness, if, you know, if there's residual funds that will go ahead and return the balance of the fees to the applicant. And then yeah, it's yeah. Because to, and the intent, intent is not a windfall. The intent is to just cover the legal costs. Right. And, and, and I'm sure part of this was us so, sort of look, looking in the crystal ball and saying, what do we think it's going to be like? What do we need? What do we think we're going to need? And if well, it turns out reality is a little different, then we yeah. Based on what, the, what we're charging, because we're charging this is a special situation, so it has a special fee. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, give this it. This yeah. will give us twenty hours of work. Yeah. Given 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 that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, given given that the board has the discretion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the board has. <laughs> The board has the discretion to uh, vote to refund unexpended monies from the retainer, the deposit, whatever we're calling it, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's just by policy, so by policy, social equity applicants get it without, don't need a vote, whereas everyone else, we would need to make a vote to make an exception. Right. And in this instance, and the only reason why I'm proposing we return it to the applicant is there's a risk that we're going to be doing two agreements, which would be potentially up to $7,500 each if our legal representation decided to 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 milk us like Bessie. Um, <laughs> and so a, a lawyer do that? So mm -hmm. we just need to mm -hmm. so we just need to to, to protect the, yeah. the citizens from downside relative to the cost of allowing yeah. to start. Con conversely, um, Kelly, if the if uh, not that I expect it to go, but just on the hypothetical that the um, that the seventy-five hundred dollars wasn't enough. Or is the town exposed to the difference? Or yeah, you are, we absolutely. Are. And I th and maybe that's one of the reasons why we decided to um, to to. Each agreement has its own, own price tag, mm -hmm. and that was the reason when we discussed it. That was that was yeah. the reason. Yeah. And I think the Although it was not termed part fully, it was not termed part fully in the document, which, by the way, is subject to change. Without <laughs> <knowing>. <laughs> Although it was not termed part fully, we discussed it. Yeah. It was well, and I was about to say, what do we need to do to put, put a, at least a nominal tax on the next 
kind of meeting warrant. Is that how we need to get to the tax? So you have to adopt the the the, um, the revenue tax, yeah. which I'm not sure what the process is. If it's just an adoption, or if it's adoption in town vote, I'd have to check. Yeah, could you check on that? Yeah, because I, I don't believe that Brookfield did when I looked on the website. I didn't see, and when I looked on the state website, I didn't see yeah. that Brookfield it was a three percent. You can you can adopt up to. Well, well, my thought was let's let's survey the other communities and let's like do something lower than some of our neighbors, but get a little something for the town. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but that is that is only on retail. No, I understand. So. No, I, and I Which understand. we want you to put it. Right, Ex <laughs> right exactly. <laughs> that's and, 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 and that's one yeah. of the reasons why I'm yeah. saying, it, like, like you know, if, if everybody else is 3%, let's go 1-5, you know, yeah. and, and we, you know, they get a little bit of a break by coming to Brookfield, but right. at the same time, the town um, gets a little. And it's for the impact. You have to have a measurable impact. Right. So that's going to have to go in special revenue fund to also be returned. Right. So. Uh, uh, understood. Which is which? The whole reason of why I'm saying for the tax, I, I think we should do a little something, but not. And we just need to figure out the mechanism. For okay. Here, here. Yeah. All right. So, All right. Uh, uh, let's see. Alright, I, I know you've had your hand up and I've, mm -hmm. I've had my glasses up and so I don't see as well without them. Okay, so the motion is to enter into an agreement and... To end the negotiation. I'm sorry, to negotiate agreement. for... Oh, thank, thank you. To, to negotiate for... To, to start the negotiation process yep. for the host community agreement and that, to, that the intention would be to um, ref, uh, refund any unexpended uh, deposit money. That was part of the motion, right? Well, yeah, the motion was to enter into negotiations for up to two discrete agreements yeah. pending determination of whether there's sufficient information for the retail entity mm -hmm. to be included in a single agreement or whether it's two. Right, and that I'm, I'm if the that. and if Mr. Fromm comes up with a location well, for retail quickly, it keeps, it keeps then changing. we can well, put it all together. If not, it can be on its own track. Motion, okay. All right. All right, good. I want to establish that now before we vote. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, we'll probably kind of go over it. Who will be involved in the actual housing anymore? And as far as the specific spot around the legal fees, how is that going to be spent? Do you hire a lawyer? Oh, it's going to be spent on the lawyers, I understand, Kelly. Yes, yeah, so, so um, the, as with any contract, mm -hmm. um, it's a larger contracts through town council. Um, this particular one in town has never entered into a host community agreement. So they would be the ones who would be involved on behalf of the select board. Town council. Correct. And then they would work out a proposed agreement which the board would then either approve or disapprove or edit or not as, as they see. So, and those fees go directly to Payton Council. Yeah, because lawyers aren't cheap. That's the only thing that comes from Payton Council. Right. I am. Right. Dave? To you, to the attorney, um, who actually is going to be holding the licenses on, you know, I hear you talk about corporations and officers and directors. Who actually will be holding these three licenses, I believe you said? Who will be actually holding it? It would be the, the business entity. Uh, what is the name of the business? Oh, entity? Sun Sun Fusions. It's the name of the entity. It won't be in, into an individual of, of anywhere in the company. Well, or well. So to, to sorry, I should clarify. So the way the CCC works it is that um, you know, the business entity is is the applicant. However, um, anyone who owns more than ten percent of that entity, and anyone who has uh, control over that entity and can make you know, major business decisions for that business entity um, is named on the license. And so, so any of those individuals who either own or control the entity, um, you know, they have to go through the whole background check process and they're vetted by the CCC and they're named on the, the paperwork as well. Yeah, thank, you. Okay. Right, thank you. And then just for, for my clarification, uh, the the ten percent ownership that's clear, but control would be directors and high level officers, CEO, CFO, that that type of thing. Yes. Okay. Exactly. I uh, just want to make sure that I that I understood what you were telling, what your response entailed. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm um, going to restate my motion in just a second. Okay. Thank you. 
What was the processing time that we had in the original document? What was the processing time that we had for return of fees? I believe oh, it was 60 uh, days. days. Within 60 days of successful completion. I, I, I think you should not stipulate the number of days because I do not know the accounting mechanisms and restrictions we have on funds that come in and mm -hmm. how we pay them out. We may have to pull that out of another account. Yeah. Have access. Okay, so I, 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 I found some, I found some, I, I found yeah. some we, yeah. weasel language. Yeah. So Target. You have six grand left, and you have to pull that out of yeah. the selectman's expenses. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. I'm done. We're closing the office. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I found, I found some weasel language. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going to give you a new motion. Okay. New motion. I move that the town. Uh, enter into negotiations for up to two discrete host community agreements with Sun Fusions Corporation. The fees for those agreement, for that agreement or those agreements, shall be up to seven, shall shall be seventy five hundred dollars each, with the understanding that any remaining funds shall be returned to the applicant upon finalization of the town's legal expenses within a reasonable time, following the uh, agreement between the parties. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I think the intent of the motion is clear, and I'm not going to quibble with the language. All right. You, all right. So, all in favor of, um, of voting to um, enter into negotiation for the host community agreement with the uh, stip with the uh, details around the uh, the fee that we're collecting uh, as as contained in the motion. Please indicate by saying aye. 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 All right, the ball is starting. We start the ball yep. rolling. Thank you. All right. Thank and so now we, now we. Uh, well, what do we have the funds on reach out to town council? That's what I was going to say. I was going to say you reach out to town council. I said once the, once the check clears. <laughs> Thank you, sirs. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, and it is 8.35. We agreed to that. Uh, let's see. Special number seven. So we've already done six. The license, uh, the liquor license. Yeah. So number seven. Special municipal elect. Uh, special municipal employee status. Okay. So back in February 2023, actually we started in 2022. I didn't get anywhere with it. So I emailed Karen in 2023 in February and asked her to put up the agenda to make a motion um, to address the special, special municipal employee matter in town. I then asked her to take it off the agenda because it was going to be on the March agenda because I couldn't get a response. I was waiting for a response from the state. I emailed the Ethics Commission. They are supposed to have a list of all of the special municipal employees for the town. They never responded to me. So, under Mass General Law, Chapter 168A, uh, Section 20, there is a caveat for the little towns. Nobody can have two positions in town. Unless you're under a certain size or something, right? Yeah, you have to be under 3,500, right? So under, I wrote this down because I knew it was going to be punchy. Under section 20 of the conflict of interest law in towns with a population of less than 3,500, the select board may allow a municipal employee to have more than one appointed position. Since the town, Brookfield, has a population as of the last census of 3,439, wow. <laughs> the select board have still got the power to authorize multiple people to hold multiple positions. Now, there are several positions in town that this impacts. Um, no page here. So what I would like the board to do, if you are so inclined, is to make a motion in the following. The town of Brookfield having a population of 34, I've got this written down, thank you, you don't have to just, um, of 3,439 as of the 2020 mm -hmm. census move that the select board authorize all municipal employees who have been appointed to multiple positions to hold more than one 
position under the provisions of General Law Chapter 268, A Section 20, and it's the final paragraph that this appears in. And this motion is based directly on the language in the statute, unless otherwise disallowed by the law. Because you are automatically special municipal employees because of it, we're under 10,000. Right. So you don't need to have this particular um, mm -hmm. thing, but we have many people in town who work for this department and that department and that department and the other department and this department and that department. They're all part-time jobs, but technically they, they shouldn't hold two positions. So this just, allow, just, this just protects everybody. Then later, because you have to specifically enumerate the positions, I'm going to come to you and ask that you make them special municipal positions. Because once we cross over that 3,500, that protects us up to 10,000. And how many Questions? people? How many people are currently going to benefit from that? Um, right now, and I didn't do an in-depth um, dive into this, but there are one, two, three. I think five people in particular who are employees that will benefit from this. And would it trigger them? They're still working under 19 hours. It has nothing to do yeah. with it. The amount of time is not relevant. It will be with a special municipal employee because they can't have worked more than 800 hours in the prior um, calendar year, but that's another matter. Mm -hmm. But under the small town exemption, you just have to approve people holding more. And it's just appointed positions. You can hold as many elected positions as the town chiefs fit to elect you without it being a conflict. Does, does holding an elected, if one holds an elected and an appointed position, are they? The appointed position has to be special. Thank you. So you cannot hold the two. Mm -hmm. Now, yep, I don't know, but that's, that's actually one of the specific examples on the list. Got mm -hmm. it, okay. Right. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So if that. If you allow this, then, then it covers everybody who holds the mm -hmm. two. Yeah. And it allows so. you to appoint people to multiple. So to to, re, to make sure that I, I under, understand what you, uh, what the motion was proposing is that we are declaring um, every Appointed position, a special municipal position. No, we are not. Okay, that's that's and that's why we check these things. So the special will come later. Okay, so what do we? This motion. All right. So yeah, read it. Read it again. I'm, I'm I need to read the actual or. language from the, the from the ethics commission. Okay. Under section 20 of the conflict of interest law, general law chapters 268a, in towns with a population of less than 3,500, the select board may allow a municipal employee to have more than one appointed position. The town has a population of 30, this does not it, but you as the select board have the power to authorize employees to hold okay. so, so are we making a, are we, so are we making a blanket authorization saying that people can be applied, can be appointed to multiple positions and You're it's cool? Okay. <laughs> so it is. It, yeah, it is a blanket. Provision. But okay. But I, I okay. I was okay. thinking. I was thinking if we were approving those, it would be more specific. It sounds like this is more of a, a blanket approval, which so, I'm okay with. Is if it if it passes muster, it passes muster. Okay. All right. So the actual motion is that the board authorize all municipal employees who have been appointed to multiple positions. This is not cover anybody in the future. We'll have to make another vote to, mm -hmm. and to allow the double appointment going forward. Right. This yeah. just covers the current people. Yeah. This, this is effectively saying those who have multiple positions, we're okay with that, right. but it does not blanket authorize them in the future. So, so 
If I were in a court, I would argue that you already approved it because you did all of the appointments. Mm -hmm. deliberately appointed we're, we're just we're just going positions. on the record that this was by intent and not yes, out of neglect. That's yes. Exactly right. mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion that we. Um, so moved. Yes. Oh, well, can, uh, well, so well, that, that we that we adopt the motion as read by Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So moved. Just added the end unless. Because even I couldn't remember that. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's past, All right. Past eight, eight yeah. And so, and, and so the first. Because when you make a special municipal employee, you have to specifically enumerate the position. This is allowing the people mm -hmm. who are currently appointed. appointed. Right. So our first order of business is covering the dual appoint the multi multi appointed people that we have. Then the next thing would going forward would be to make sure we have what we need for. Yeah. You could do a blanket one that makes all appointed positions special municipal employees mm -hmm. with the caveat that you will come back and reaffirm that vote, mm -hmm. enumerating every individual position. Mm -hmm. Which would be a, I like to call it a boot and suspender mm -hmm. approach because it keeps everything where it belongs and it keeps everything on your feet if you know where I'm going. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I just, I just want to make sure everybody's back is covered. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Well, technically, there's no second, so I'll second it. Mm -hmm. All right. I was counting your preemptive <laughs> second. <laughs> all right. Um, all in favor of the um, motion to. I, I, I cannot uh, approve multiple positions, uh, multiple positions uh, as, as uh, so moved. Uh, please say aye. 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 Do you it's want like, to do a motion to make the special municipal employee, everything special municipal employee? Everything that's appointed is a special municipal employee. Yes. yes. And I'll make a motion that we'll all appointed positions, that. yeah, all appointed positions shall be considered special municipal employees and that at, at some time in the not too distant future we'll come back and enumerate set, said positions. Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, all right. And Remind me, it's, what is the distinction of a special municipal employee versus one that's not designated? It's just, is it just it's that they can be multiple? It's special forever until you reach 10,000. Mm -hmm. The position itself is special. It's not the person. All right. And so the difference is that, that this can change. You can turn around and, and somebody else comes in and there's a, a job here and a job here. You don't want to approve them because it, it, you just don't. I don't know why you wouldn't because I'm too tired of thinking. Mm -hmm. but, but so that is not a permanent fix. Right. It only covers the people now. Mm -hmm. The special municipal covers the position going forward until right. the population of 10,000, mm -hmm. which will probably not be in my lifetime. Yes. Well, if we get <laughs> that railroad station. I was going to say, even, <laughs> if get, even if we get a railroad station, I don't yeah. think we're going right. to hit 10 grand. But, yeah, right. but I, what, what I'm trying to understand is other, other than if exactly. designating the positions as special municipal especially municipal mm -hmm. other than allowing the positions uh, 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 one person to hold multiple of those positions at the same time what other change does it make so if we don't do this you're subject to criminal no no i, no, I, under, I understand that no but but that's, this is the change it makes okay thank you that's that's it protects them it makes it legal it makes it legal to do what you're already it's, no, that's, that's not, it's, it's just the, the law of unintended consequences. I understand we're making this change in order to protect people, and I'm all for that. It doesn't change any benefits. It doesn't change any jobs. It doesn't change. All it does is make it legal for people to hold more yeah. than one. And, and the that, state specifically did this because they understand that little towns have difficulty finding people. You've mm -hmm. got a core group of people who break their backs for the town. <coughs> and they do a wonderful job. They mm -hmm. should not be punished for being, mm -hmm. for wanting to volunteer yep. and doing these things. No, I, I agree so with that. It just, I just want to protect them. Yeah, just, and I, I just want to make sure that there aren't unintended consequences lurking out there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for instance, like my position, I cannot be a special person. So that's why the caveat. Yeah, the, the law says you may not. The, a town administrator may not be. Mm -hmm. And you are automatically special. 
Mm-hmm. Because they want to punish. They don't want to punish people for taking that selectman job. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more than it already I mean, it, it kind of <laughs> came up last year, and I'm not volunteering to do it. But I mean, when I did say last year, if they did need help With at the plow. highway department, I would have plowed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But I. <laughs> yeah, but then we had to get ethics involved. Because, yeah, but you're a special. So, right. Yeah. But if mm-hmm. we don't declare a highway job, which is appointed, a special, we both have to be special. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm good. Anyone have any more questions? No. <laughs> all right. All in favor of the uh, of the motion a uh, uh, best motion to declare all appointed positions special municipal positions. Get it right. Unless otherwise exempted by law. Yeah. Exactly. Unless exempted by law. Uh, please say aye. 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 Okay. And I'll work on All right. Thank you. And motion and, to adjourn. Uh, so, well, so we've got we've got we we've get the. Was the the ARPA funds for the chief. chief. All right, so. So, seeing as yeah, there's no the second. Of time, when you first did your first vote, it was a blanket open vote that, we, that the water department could use the funds. They were never given a percentage. They were never given an amount. Just do the project because they were the only game in town. They were the only eligible project. Yeah. Then they opened it up and Ryan came and said, hey, I want to do it this and you guys said okay but we hadn't gone out to bid so we didn't know how much money it was so you never voted um, at that mm-hmm. point you did then say you have 197 you can't say what you need anyway so you're given more uh, um, Kathy's paperwork because Kathy is one who's been tracking it and it also has all the backup in the data so the numbers that Kathy has is, is 100% accurate we do not need the money that was requested for the um, upstairs. Because the quote came in at 46.5. So I would like you to rescind that vote. You, you voted 170 for repair of the upstairs and the fire alarm, right? If you read the vote, it's there. You see it? Your time um, is yes. at the 8.30. 824. It was on 824, I think. It says 834. Yeah, but the motion's 824, so. And then it says for town, and I guess it's for town hall. It's for town hall, yes. So I would like you to rescind that vote. And I would also like you to rescind the vote for the um, the 101,000 that was put aside for the water project pending the grant. We already did, you already rescinded the 56. So that one's back on the table. So that one, you have it in here so that you can see all of the votes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I make a motion that we rescind the $101,000 allocated at the uh, four 2023 select board meeting mm-hmm. and the Hundred and seventy thousand from the eight twenty four twenty three meeting for the town hall. Yes. So does that mean we still have like two seventy one left in our room? Uh, we actually two thirty one. That's in here too, right? You said you put Kathy's. Kathy's all attached. Right. So. And then and then yeah. So there's there's unspent. There's 203,636. So once you rescind. So just rescind those and we'll, we'll figure that well, out. Yeah, we've out. got the motion on the floor to rescind those. Second. Second. All right. All right. Uh, all right. And, the, and we're expecting we'll allocate funds for the. Uh, the ballroom and the fire and the fire yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll we'll reallocate those because they send those and i'll tell you what we need to be reallocated to those two projects all right all in favor of rescinding the uh, hundred one thousand for the uh, water department project from 4 2023 and the hundred seventy thousand dollars for the town hall work from the 8 24 23 meetings please say aye aye, aye. aye. thank you okay that makes us a total of one hundred and forty five thousand four hundred thirty six dollars and seventy three cents that is not allocated Okay. 
The Baldwin painting came in at 46.2. I would like 47, just in case there is some bizarre quirk no, that we need. 48, just in case there's a cost. Yeah, like, like there's a cost we've got to we've got to pay for them to rent a lift to do the ceiling or something. So I like 48 for that, and then whatever they don't use. We'll like yeah, we'll go back. Okay. Um, I, I'll make a motion to. What uh, about the fire, though? Just okay. one at a time. Okay, one at a time. Because this is where all the confusion came. Yeah, I'll make a motion to allocate $48,000 for the uh, uh, work for the baller. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. All in favor of allocating forty-eight thousand dollars of ARPA money for the uh, for the uh, ballroom renovation project, please say aye. 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 Okay. And then I would like fifteen for the engineering because the engineering to do the engineering for the fire alarm was twelve, but travel time and any expenses it's are on, on top of that. So I would I would like a fifteen for that because I think that will more than cover. So I'll make a motion that we allocate fifteen thousand dollars in ARPA funds for the engineering portion of uh, town hall fire alarm installation. Second. All right. All in favor of fifteen thousand for the uh, fire alarm engineering, please say aye. 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 All right, Kelly. Does that leave us with eighty-eight thousand unallocated? Well, I'm, I'm doing the math right now. Okay. I'm sorry, 82, probably 82. It leaves us with 125. That doesn't make sense. I did the math wrong. Did you take that out of the available money, not the allocated money? I'm or the unallocated? It, no, I'm taking it out of what was available. Okay. It's basically $82,000 yeah. left. Yeah. yeah, so 82000 unallocated. So that, if we allocate that toward the insulation, and then we have that to go out to bid. You know how much we have, and if the bids come in over that, then we're going to have to figure something out. But you need something to show good faith. But yeah, yeah. We need, I need yeah. to have that's, that's enough funding probably. in the yeah. kitty to go out to bid. Yeah, we have to appropriate. The, there has to be money assigned to the project right. to go out to bid. I'll make you a can't, motion that we allocate eighty-two thousand dollars to deal with the insulation scenario at the police station. Second. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm good with it. We got to move this forward. That's got to get done before it gets colder. All in favor of allocating the remaining, aiming the remaining eighty-two thousand dollars of ARPA money to the police station insulation project, please say aye. 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 And that's a substantive enough money that even though it might not cover, it, we can at least be going out in good faith because we might get a quarter for seven years. Yeah, I yeah I I think the intention is once we get a cost we can if if it comes in at fifty two thousand dollars we can look at pulling some of that money back and finding another use for it, yeah. and once we know the cost but this way we've got it covered. Yeah. Dave, real quick. Yeah, once you uh, allocate that and they find out about that, most companies are just going to they're going to go close to that big. Yeah. Um, we don't tell them though. We're not going to tell them how much we have. We just have to have money. We don't yeah. say, we have this much money, can you give us a quote? We say, this is what the work we need done, give us a quote, and then we look at what we have and what they said and go, yeah, no, we're dead in the water, or yep, this comes within budget. Yeah, we have enough, so yeah. We and if That's people call and ask me, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not done yet. Yeah. And I have said that to vendors on multiple occasions. Well, how much money do you have for technology? That's actually none of your business. Yes. Why don't you give me your phone for that? Yeah, best price, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all in favor of adjourning this meeting at 8.56, please say aye. 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 And we're out of here.